here come the Trojans. Out of the Pac-12. 11 and 2. The question begs, what will their response be coming off that loss against Utah in the conference championship game? Mark Jones, Robert Griffin III back again. Quinn Kesnick down in the field. Caleb Williams took apart defenses this mm. year to the tune of 37 touchdown passes. But we're going to have to watch how closely and how well he runs in this game. Yeah, I mean, the guy's got unbelievable talent. If right. it was golf, he's got every single club in his bag that right. he needs. So let me show you a little bit what they do on offense. Right here, they're going to put so much stress on the safeties. They run a deep sit to kind of block the guy, a deep cross with a post and a curl on the outside. Caleb Williams isn't going to get bogged down by the safeties taking the deep sit and the deep cross. He sees the big picture, shows you his vision, and the arm strength, a 53-yard dime to Jordan Addison for a touchdown. But that's just not it. Look at this creativity and improvisation. I got to give a shout out to the offensive line. Okay. They gave this man 4.1 seconds in a beautiful pocket. But that's all. He's got eyes in the back of his head. Watch him as he scrambles around. Keeps his eyes downfield. But when he decides to go, this man is electric. Strong runner. Elusive. And he's got swag for days. And then this one, the pocket movement and the toughness. If you didn't know, he tore his hamstring in the first quarter of this game of the Pac-12 championship. Doesn't matter. Woo Makes a guy miss. Then he stands in the face of adversity, stares down the barrel, then throws a dime down the middle of the field. His toughness cannot be questioned. He's here today playing despite having an injury that should have sidelined him for multiple months. Yeah. The guy loves this team. He loves his coaches. And look at this guy. Today, he's going to come out here and try to do something special. Meanwhile, Caleb Williams, look at those impressive numbers. 4,070 yards passing this year. Fourth most in college football in the FBS. And uh, they've had a lot of changes, though, on that offensive line. We'll chronicle that in just a few moments. Robert, what is he worth, though, to USC? Everything. Literally. Some people say, hey, we don't like the transfer portal. We don't right. like NIL. We don't want to hear about these things. Well, USC got a Heisman Trophy out of the transfer portal. They got double-digit wins for the first time in five seasons from the transfer portal. And that means Caleb Williams means everything to this city and to this school. And there he is down in the field getting ready. USC will get the football first. That means we'll see Williams on the field first as Tulane won the toss deferring to the second half. We can rally in his first year on the sidelines. We'll see that rebuilt and reconstructed offensive line for USC on this opening offensive series of the football game. Lee Crown back deep. And they'll take it first and 10 from their own 25 yard line. Let's go down to Quint. You know, Caleb Williams did not come out in the early part of warmups when the quarterbacks and wide receivers came. I gave you a little pause. It's a little abnormal, but he did show up with 86 minutes left on the clock. Came out in his white, uh, white shirt. He had his rib guards on and the black knee sleeve and went through a pretty rigorous, rigorous warm-up. It reminded me of a Mark Jones light cardio day. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, culminating with some sprints, uh, and he showed really good speed in his last sprint. This is a collaborative effort between their sports medicine and strength and conditioning teams using GPS to track his speed. He looks somewhere near 90%. They've well, got a lot of resources to get him right. He hands it off to Austin Jones on first down. Darius Hodges making the tackle we talked about the offensive line it's been redone because in particular Andrew Voorhees reluctant to pass on the game and get healthy and get ready for the NFL draft second down and eight coming up Williams out of the shotgun Taj Washington number 16 their leading receiver coming into the game here available. Jordan Addison not playing. They'll hand it off. Jones again picks up a first down out to about the 37 yard line as we take a look at Robert Griffin the third's keys. Yes, one of the keys is ride the wave. Your best players have to play their best today. That's Caleb Williams, whether it's Austin Jones out of the backfield. But you're talking about top it off. 
Both teams have to limit the big plays. When you come off such a delay, the fundamentals can kind of go away. And protect and serve. Protect your quarterback and run the football to the mm -hmm. best of your ability. I love the fact that USC came out and ran the ball in the first two plays. That's one of Tulane's weaknesses defensively. The run defense has been porous at times this year. As for their pass defense, they got some good heat on Williams. That pass was ruled incomplete. Hodges with good pressure just called his name. He's their best pass rusher up front. Both he and Macon Clark with good heat. It sets up second down and 10. Williams completed 66% of his passes this year. Sophomore out of Washington, D.C. in Barack Obama Elementary School. Mm. Pretty cool school to go to. Yes. Right? And he does have the audacity of hope. <laughs> that pass complete right near the first down marker to Mario Williams. Brought down by Young. His forward progress is going to be marked short of that first down. Looked like they didn't get a great spot on that. Let's take another look here, Robert. Yeah, just good ball placement right there by Caleb Williams. Going to his brother, Mario Williams. And I mean brother brother from a different mother. Not right. literally brothers. But at the end of the day, these two guys are going to be have a big impact on this game. Because there is no Jordan Addison, Caleb is going to lean on the guy that he has the most familiarity with. Third and two. Going to throw it. Open for the first down at the 44-yard line. Yeah. Mario Williams, his namesake, with another catch. And that moves the chains. Man, it feels good when, you, when you're when you making a good point, Mark. And then they go right back to him. Mario Williams, you see him just suddenness at the top of the route, breaks it off, creates that separation. Mark, I think you could have completed that one yes. for him right there. Yeah, i I make that. Like you said, uh, look like one of my active recovery days down there for <laughs> Caleb Williams warming up. So far, he's moved around pretty well in the pocket. They're going to run it. Ooh. He keeps it himself. Slips and falls at about the 40-yard line, but good agility there. The pick up four yards. Dorian Williams making the tackle. Look at this move. Yeah, look, he puts him. Whoop, whoop. Dorian Williams, one of the best defenders on Tulane, puts him in a spin cycle, gets his feet up, and then preserves himself when he knows he can't take any big hits. Yeah, we talk about his throwing prowess. That's what he did on the ground this year. Average a little over three yards per rush. Ten touchdowns included. Second and six. You know what I love seeing so far from Caleb is he's not trying to do too much. You saw that spin there, but he's just been getting the ball out, playing point guard right now, letting his guys get going. Surveys. And now it's going to take off, slides in. At about the 35-yard line, Dorian Williams limits that gain to four yards. Third down coming up. Yeah, you can see it from his viewpoint. He's just going to scan the field from left to right, working through his progressions, and then when it's time to go, it's time to go. Seems a little hesitant, not trying to run too quick out of okay. the gates, but it is good to see him moving around. I know that's giving his team a lot of confidence that he is back and ready to roll. That's better than he was moving the last time we saw him against Utah. 100%. Play clock at five. They're going to run it and pick up the first down. Austin Jones. Who averaged almost six yards per rush this year. Moves the chains, picked up two, just enough. That was the ball to the 34 yard line. You know, Mark had an opportunity to call USC spring game uh, this year. And Austin Jones was a guy that the coaches pointed out. You know, offensive coordinator Dennis Simmons said, not a lot of people know this guy's name, but by the end of the year, they will. And I think that's true. And he's getting a chance to, to be the star here for the last few weeks because Travis Dye is out with an injury. They have to keep running the football and run it effectively today. That is when their offense is the most balanced. Williams hands it off again. Jones inside the 30. Talk about the absence of Travis Dye, big time player, second team, all pack 12. Ball security high and tight, right, Robert? Oh, yeah. A little tiki barber action there, you know what I'm saying? Got to gotta make, oh, oh, a hey, little slippage right there. <laughs> yeah. You look at him, look down like, hey, man, I don't know if that right. logo, something's going on right there. But you want to make sure you have all those points of protection there, bicep next to the chest, keep it high and tight so the defense can't get it out.
Like they had a little check with me by Caleb Williams. Got it out quickly on the slant, incomplete. Washington had it in his hands and couldn't squeeze. Williams put it right where it had to be, but it sets up a third and six. Yeah, you'll see, Caleb, nice throw, and ooh, Taj Washington just tried to run without the ball. All my young receivers out there, make sure you look it in before you try to go do something with it. Transfer from Memphis. Yeah. Gotta love that leadership there by Caleb Williams, though. It's all good. 100% saying, hey, just calm down. You good? Sometimes the fundamentals can leave you from a month being off. Maybe that drop can lead to a big game for Todd Walker. Third and six on the receiver screen, complete. And a nice effort after the catch. Looks like it's going to be a little bit short. Relique Brown, running back, was out as a receiver and appears to be about a foot short of that first down. Interesting decision coming up here for Lincoln Riley. Yeah, I think the only decision here is to go for it. Be aggressive. Come out, show your offensive line. You got five of them starting in new positions. The first game all starting together. Show them that you trust them. Run the ball, do a quarterback sneak, something here. Fourth and one. Looks like they're going to be in the shotgun, so Austin, maybe sneak is off. Austin Jones in the backfield. And Lincoln Timeout, Riley USC. Put on his the first of the three half. timeouts. Williams, the Heisman Trophy winner, directing traffic when we come back for fourth and short. You know, Caleb Williams is telling Lake McCree, look at me, I'm on the field. Don't look at the coaches. I'm the quarterback. If I'm telling you to do something, go and do it. I love that type of leadership. But what was he saying to him, Mark? I'm the captain now. I'm the captain I'm now. I'm the captain now. <laughs> I got the Heisman. 12th play of the drive coming up. Fourth and short. Williams going to line up under center. Going to keep it himself. Looks like he had enough surge to pick up that first down. Terrain trying to say that they stopped him and the ball came out, one or the other, but yeah, that's going to be a first down. You know, we called it before the break. Hey, you only got a few inches to get. Go quarterback sneak. Right here, he clearly gets the first down. Then they push him back. All the extracurriculars are going on. But hey, first down, Lincoln Riley trusting that offensive line. Let's, let's give it up to them. This is playing extremely well right now on this drive, despite all the mix and matching they've done over the last month. Jones in the backfield with McCree. Williams gets it out. Threw it behind his tight end, Lake McCree. It'll be second down and 10. A rare miss that time for a guy that completed 66% of his passes this year. You know, everybody talked about the hamstring and what kind of fitness he would bring into the game, but there was never any doubt that Caleb Williams would play in this game, Robert, if healthy. He said, hey, we've been through the past 12 months together. I need to be out there and finish it with my guys. Relief Brown in the backfield. He's at the ground, trying to get to the edge. Great pursuit Ooh. by the Tulane secondary. And Lance Robinson came up from his corner support spot and put a big hit on him. Yeah, talk about this. Caleb Williams being at the banged up hamstring. He's, now he's got something going on with his left hand. You see him there flexing it. Us quarterbacks, we don't like to tell everybody what's going on. <laughs> right. But if you watch for the small details, you can tell that something is bothering him. We need to watch that for the rest of the game. Third and long. They go empty here. Wide open underneath Rice. And Rice has the first down at about the 11-yard line. Boy, they spread out that secondary, Robert, and Williams had his choice. Yeah, it was just a beautiful rub route underneath between Brendan Rice and Mario Williams. Brendan Rice, the son of Jerry Rice, showing you he knows how to get skinny, gets the first down. Caleb Williams, once again, just being the point guard, delivering from the pocket. It looks like USC doesn't have that much rust mm. coming off of that month being off. Impressive opening drive here. 
and Riley said they really loved having that time off. Williams hands it off to Austin Jones inside the 10 to about the nine picked up three on the play. It's week 17 and we have a big AFC Monday Night Football matchup for you. Josh Allen and the 12 and 3 Bills taking on Joe Burrow and the 11 and 4 Bengals. 815 Eastern 515 Pacific on ESPN ABC ESPN 2 Deportes and ESPN Plus. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 7 on ESPN 2. And Robert Griffin the third on that. <laughs> Okay, so who in the booth today might have to run because his lovely bride Grete might oh. be having a, a a baby sometime soon. You you gonna stick around on me? Today, I'm, gonna, right? I'm gonna stick around. <laughs> and listen, I got we that. We need to talk to her though. I got that call <laughs> in the Fiesta Bowl. Just when you're a father and you get that call from your wife saying, "Hey, I think I might be going into labor," you drop everything you're doing hey. and you try to make you try to make it. And and being six hours away was really nerve wracking, but luckily. Uh, God allowed her and the baby to hold on, and it was a false alarm in that in that regard. But I'm still watching my phone every single second. You got a two-minute offense that won't stop. Williams gets it out on the receiver screen. Complete touchdown, Jackson. Michael Jackson. Thriller. An impressive, methodical invariable drive for the score and it's just a simple zone read we're gonna run the little quick screen to the outside and Michael Jackson the third says it's time to beat it <laughs> Boy, Jackson with his fifth touchdown catch of the season fourth of his career and the 38th touchdown pass for the Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams 17 plays 75 yards Eclipsing 902 on the clock. How's that for impressive? The USC Trojans in the building tonight in Arlington when we come back. But in pregame, we see Tulane rocking the glasses mm. and everything, and I'm saying, hey, who's cooler than who? Listen, my family's from New Orleans, Louisiana, so right. I know they know how to get down there, and we're going to see if they can get down on the football field here today trying to go out and secure the greatest turnaround in FBS yes. history from being 2-10 and 10 last year to possibly becoming 12-2 and 2 with a win today. Man, Willie Fritz has this green wave rolling. Man, that swag was dumb coming off the bus today. <laughs> the hats, the glasses, everything about it was a vibe. This will come out first and 10 at their own 25 yard line, and that's where we go to Q. During that, during that last stoppage, Caleb Williams, whose question marks were about his hamstring, entered the medical tent for their staff to look at his left hand. Ring finger, pinky finger of that left hand. The Heisman winner is in the tent. He's physical. He doesn't just like breaking long runs, but he also loves blocking for his quarterback and pass protection. And then for you at USC, Tuli Tui Pelotu leading the country in sacks with 12 and a half. This guy plays all over the field. Can't wait to show you exactly what he does best. First down and 10. Here's Spears. Nice gain of about seven on first down. As seven consecutive 100 yard rushing games coming into this one today, which leads the FBS. 5'11 junior out of Louisiana. A great comeback story, too. Missed the first six games last year with an ACL injury. And unbridled confidence, imbued with confidence coming into this one against USC. On second and four, a little option. And the first down, Spears took a hit on the corner from Max Williams, but moved the chains. You know, Mark, when we talked to Tajay Spears this week leading up to the game, the confidence that he had, just the, the unbelievable preparation that they have taken, they expected to be here in this moment because of the amount of work that they had put in. And his head coach, Willie Fritz, <laughs> he said he's a tough boot. Now, right. if I ever heard a more country saying, I would say it. But he said he's a tough boot. I don't have any boots, so I don't know how tough they are. But Tajay Spears brings that type of intensity. 
But a play fake. Pratt on the move. We're trying to run it. Steps out of bounds at about the 38. Almost getting back to the line of scrimmage. Michael Pratt ran for about 33 yards per game this season. Good mobility. Lost a yard on that play. What do you make of his running skills, Robert? Oh, I love his running skills, but I love his game, too. Each year he's been playing, he's gotten incrementally better. I'll diagram that for you a little bit later, but he also led the American Conference in passing efficiency. Only five interceptions, 25 touchdown passes, mm. and 10 rushing. He has been efficient all season long, and a big reason they've had 11 wins. Hands it off to Spears. Cut it inside and brought down right at the line of scrimmage by McCutcheon. That's a third down and long for Michael Pratt, a quarterback for Tulane. A guy who, as characterized by coaches, is competitive, has great retention, picks things up quickly, and processes quickly as well. He's going to need it here. You know, here on third and 11, you don't want to let third and long beat you. His coach said oftentimes he can overthink things. If the check down is there, throw it. Don't try to create too much here early in the football game. With a bunch formation at the bottom of the screen. Pratt's going to take off and come up about two yards short of the first down near midfield. Figueroa making the tackle on the play. A nine yard gain, but about two yards short. Pratt looking over to the sidelines at his head coach, Willie Fritz. And they're going to send the punt team out. Casey Glover will punt. That offense for Tulane was remodeled. Uh, during the offseason, Robert, a big yes. part of their success this year. Yes, their offensive coordinator, Jim Smota. You know, first year with the team, coming over from Central Missouri as the head coach after 11 years there, it really paid off. Their offense has taken off and is exactly why they are here today. Mm. Little directional punting away from Jackson. It takes a great bounce for Tulane. And it's going to be down at about the five-yard line. We'll see how... Caleb Williams follows up the longest opening drive in Cotton Bowl history of 75 yards the last time out. When we come back, got some great all access for you. Good day. Good day. Lincoln Riley with his transfer quarterback and Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams back out for the second series of the football game. Throwing out of the end zone under duress. Got it off. Got a man. And overshot him at the 45. Kyle Ford was open. And Williams would love to have that one back. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You know, talking to offensive coordinator Dennis Simmons, he said that Kyle Ford is a lot faster than people give him credit for. <laughs> but he's not quite that fast. Okay. That, was, that was like Tyreek Hill might have been able to run that one down. Caleb's got to calm down, take a deep breath, because he had a great matchup there down the field wide open. Let's go down to Quinn. Caleb's elusive nature in the pocket, that's his special sauce. That's his superpower. Playing with that left hand that was being examined in the tent. Big hit on Austin Jones. A little over the 10-yard line. Hodges and Dorian Williams making the stop on the play. Again, of six, it'll be third. Coming up for USC. Yeah, you're going to see Dorian Williams, number two, and Darius Hodges all over the field today. Darius Hodges actually led the, the American Conference in tackles for loss last year. This year, defensive coordinator Chris Hampton said, hey, we did a little bit more drop eight, so it hurt his stats, but he's still an enforcer for them on the defensive side of the ball. Williams has a interesting configuration of wrap on his non-throwing hand, his left hand. Good news is he throws it with his right. And he got a man downfield to the 45, Washington. And Taj Washington run out of bounds and a first down for the Trojans. He wasn't going to overthrow his man twice. No, he wasn't. Nice semi-roll. Williams reads it high to low. And there's his man, Taj Washington. Hey, remember he had that drop earlier? Yeah. Said, hey, maybe that drop was going to set him up for a big game. Well, that was a big 53-yard gain right there from USC. He more than made up for that drop. Into the short side of the field, receiver screen, and the tackle immediately made on Hudson by Jarius Monroe. Williams was shaken up a little bit earlier. We talked about the non-throwing hand. His left hand, you see him kind of flexing it 
and being looked at by the athletic training staff went into the tent after that and emerged with looks like a piece of tape on his ring finger didn't look like that a moment ago no it didn't <laughs> and I don't think there's anything wrong with with having the tape there on the non-throwing hand uh, you know as long as your throwing hand is fine you can grip the ball like this on a flip flip oh, yes. yes. got a man downfield in the end zone incomplete Mario Williams just got his fingertips on it but was running out of real estate in the back of the end zone it'll be third and long coming up well, they pull, going deep into the playbook here, Rob. Yeah, Austin Jones, little flea flicker action. They protected up really, really well. And when you're this short on the field, that's why Caleb Williams drove the ball so much. Just the receiver there at the very end, Mario Williams, trying to get his feet in and also secure the catch, just ran out of space. Third and 11. Malik Brown will line up as a receiver. They go empty. Five wideouts. Here he is, Brown, on the receiver screen. Got the first down. Great execution and a great block by Taj Washington to clear the path. So this is an impressive drive on the heels of the longest opening drive in bowl history a moment ago. 17 plays. 15-yard gain on that last play. Yeah, you see it right there. Longest opening drive in Cotton Bowl history. And what they're doing is protecting Caleb Williams, getting the ball out fast, and allowing their playmakers to make plays. Illegal substitution, offense, 12 players in formation, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, this is not the CFL, so that's going to be a penalty. Robert, what do you make of the offensive line so far? So much noise about it coming into the game with guys who are in and not in. Yeah, these, these guys are seizing their opportunity. It seems like the only thing that can slow down USC's offense right now is the referees throwing mm -hmm. flags. So that pushes them back just a little bit, but you got to take your hat off to them. No one thought that they'd be able to perform this way, especially after the starting line gave up seven sacks to Utah in the Pac-12 championship. Williams gets it out quick. Incomplete intended for Williams again. Sets up a third down and long. And wow, where did that first quarter go? It was the end of the first quarter. <laughs> Caleb Williams has his team leading seven to nothing. So close. Missing by that much. Back for the second quarter right after this. Midnight, He's dancing around. <laughs> no names. <laughs> Nobody on blast up here. Second and 15 for USC from the 24. You know, Mark, so far on offense, they've had seven different guys have a reception. They're spreading it around beautifully. That's what you like to have that balance to keep the defense off. There he goes on the ground again. Austin Jones picks up about three. Patrick Jenkins making the tackle on the play. USC offense has been pretty balanced for most of the year and right now dominating the time of possession. Third and 12 come up. They got to get to the nine. In these situations, they've gone to these screens because they see this defense playing so far off. Let's see if they go to it again. A trips punch formation at the top of the screen. Caleb Williams moving around, got rid of it right in the middle of the field, complete for a first down. Brendan Rice still on his feet, but there's a flag down all the way back at the 30 yard line. Yeah, it's going to be holding on the offense, I think. Now, yeah, Cortland Ford, number 74. Holding. Offense number 74. 10 yard penalty. Third down. He had a grab of Nick Anderson, who's one of the leaders of that two lane defense. Yeah, you're going to see him right there on the edge, right there. Little hold. Oh, trying to choke that man out. Then he hit him. <laughs> then he clubbed him in the back of the man, head. Man. What is this, WWE? Really? <laughs> Referee wasn't watching. Well, he was in this case. I'm gonna back it up. Kim sets up a scenario from the 32 now. We got a timeout on the field. ESPN is proud to support the college football playoff foundation. 
And it's Extra Yard for Teachers initiative by recognizing thousands of great teachers every year. Together, we are doing more to uplift the teaching profession than any other sports entity in the country. For more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard. Great teachers change lives. Third and 22. Williams with all day. Still on the loose. Flings it. Caught into two. Rice at the one. Wow, what a miraculous grab by Brendan Nice. Look how much time Caleb Williams bought on that play. If we can get a stopwatch at some point to track it, they're going hurry up right here, getting to the, to the line. But my goodness, the backdoor cut, the throw to Rice on the goal line. Wow. Austin Jones runs it. He's going to be stopped for a loss of about two. That was a 30-yard gain, Robert. Yeah, you know, at times they try to catch the defense off guard by running the ball there. But let's go back to that beautiful catch. He rolled the dice on Rice, and he won. Mm. Brendan Rice comes back. That's what we talk about when we say, hey, receivers, protect your quarterback. Step back to the football when it's in the air and let it be known that it is yours. Brendan Rice did that right there. That's the definition of a HBO, fellas. <laughs> Help a brother out. Second and goal. Brown in the backfield. Williams into the end zone. Back shoulder fade incomplete. Broken up nicely by Jarius Monroe, the all-conference performer in the American Conference. First team, third and goal coming up. I'm not going to lie. I don't blame Caleb Williams for throwing that one. He just saw what Brendan Rice did on the two plays ago, so he's trying to give him another jump ball opportunity. Yeah, he could put the ball a little further into the back of the end zone there, but you can't discredit the coverage there by Jarius Monroe. Uh, their defensive coordinator, Chris Hampton, told us he's their best cover corner. So if he's out there on an island, they trust that he's going to be able to make those type of plays. Trojans with three receivers to the bottom of your screen. Williams rolls that way, fires, touchdown, USC, Bynum. Williams moves the team downfield with surgical precision and puts it in the end zone again, his second touchdown pass of the game. And for Bynum, his first touchdown catch of the season. Super simple. You bring Bynum in, you run sprint right option, you have one guy block for him, the other guy go to the flat. If the defense does not rally there fast enough, you got a, a, an athletic quarterback like Caleb Williams and you're making the throwing window easier mm. for him. Beautiful play call there by Lincoln Riley. 14-0 for USC. 12.33 to go in the first half. 12 plays, 95 yards. And 5.13 on the clock, another back-to-back -back impressive drives by USC and Caleb Williams. Was he on the field, running around, looking to try to make a play? And you saw the clock started there at 51. He's rolling, he's rolling, he's rolling. And look at his vision, keeping his eyes down the field. Now I'm going to do a little math here, okay? We got 51. We got minus, what, what is that? We got minus 40. Oh, that's 11 seconds. There we go. That's a long time. That's a long time. 11 seconds of his offensive line trying to block for him. 11 seconds of his receivers trying to get open. Unbelievable, man. Kevin Agandhi's math is pretty good, too. Kevin? Mark, <laughs> happy new year. And let me tell you guys, LSU wasting little time with their offense in the cheese at Citrus Bowl. They're looking really good against Purdue, Dan. Yeah, physical both line of scrimmage right now, controlling the game up front. And right now, knocking on the door for another score up 14-0 in the second. Back to you guys. Happy new year. Happy new year to y'all, too. 12.33 to go in the first half. Been a quiet day for the offense for the Green Wave, especially Najee Spears. Hasn't been on the field all that much. Going to be on the field to get a touch. He does here and picks up about three. And, Mark, that's the thing. You talk about them not being on the field because USC has been going on these long, elongated drives. This two-lane offense... Uh, you see it right here. Wow. Right? 14 minutes to three minutes of time of possession. This two-lane offense, they're a run first team. 523 runs to 361 passes. They have to start putting together drives here so that they don't get put too much in a hole and have to throw the ball to get back in it. 
They fake the jet sweep. Oh, he keeps it himself. He's in the clear. Out to the 40 and run out of bounds at about the 30 into Trojan territory. Man, that offense needed that kind of jolt. Yes, they did. Michael Pratt needed that. You're going to see it. Little zone read. QB power down the middle makes a cut. And then he's in the open field. This guy's got 10 rushing touchdowns on the year, so don't sleep on his legs. And dang sure don't call him sneaky athletic. Okay. He's an athlete. Good burst, great speed there. Celestine in the backfield here after that 40-yard run. Those are the ball to 33 for the wave. Platt down the sideline, incomplete intended for Shea Wyatt. Who's fresh off of a two touchdown reception performance in the American Conference title game against UCF? Coach is telling us that he might be the most well rounded wide receiver that they have of a very talented group, which includes Deuce Watts as well. They have several guys, Robert, that have caught 30 footballs this year. Yeah, they got four wide receivers that have 30 or more catches. But the two guys that really score touchdown for him are the one they just threw to, Shea Wyatt and Deuce Watts, number two. They have 15 combined this season. Got a whistle and a flag. Look like we might get an illegal substitution here. Illegal substitution, offense, 12 players in formation, five yard oh, wow. penalty, second down. And push it back a little bit. And hey, we can tell you how explosive. Watson Wyatt are. We could show you too. Right there. The championship game. They were a big time force in that victory against UCF. They're also on the all name team. Oh, yeah. For dang sure. <laughs> Deuce Watts and Shane Wyatt. I love it. There's Clayton Johnson. Got to the edge and picked up a first down. For the Green Wave offense gaining a little bit of steam and momentum. A 19 yard gallop. By Clayton Johnson. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. You see him pull the guard and the, and, the, and the tackle right there to get around to the edge. They get it. And then Clayton Johnson, all he's got to do is run like his fast Friday, man. It's like a 40 out there. Nobody's there to contain the edge. That's exactly what the green wave needed. Brad keeps it himself and he's brought down at the 17 yard line. One thing we haven't mentioned during the second quarter, Robert, everybody talked about the lack of tackling skills by USC's defense mm -hmm. in that championship game against Utah and that's something that we're going to keep an eye on coming into this game it got so bad to the point where Kai Blackman went to social media to defend coach Grinch his defensive coordinator yeah this defense hasn't been the most stout but they have been very opportunistic and we'll talk about that after the snap Brad taking a shot into the end zone broken up by the guy I just mentioned, Makai Blackman. It was intended for Deuce Watts. So he can talk it and he can back it up. He just did. Yeah, you saw him and Deuce Watts talking it right here. He's just in man coverage. Hey, receiver turns his eyes. You see his eyes get a little bit big. What do you do? Turn your eyes back, find the football, knock it down. Makai Blackman, you could probably say everybody on this team is a transfer for USC, but he's coming in from Colorado. And he's making nice plays all year long. Third team all conference, third team all American. Pardon me. A little over 10 minutes to go in the first half. Third down and eight. They got to get to the nine to pick up the first down. It's caught. Oh, great move by Spears. Still on his feet. He stepped out of bounds before he got into the end zone at about the two. Figueroa missed a tackle. And it sets up a first and goal for the Green Wave, a 14-yard pickup. Yeah, just an easy rail route by the running back. And then what's he say? How low can you go? Man, Tajay Spears. Did he step out? Yeah, just barely, man. Yeah. Stepped out there, almost had a touchdown. But a great catch, great play by him, showing off that flexibility, man. The yoga's paying off. Spears on the wildcat, takes the direct snap into the end zone, no doubt. Tajay Spears, he put it on their head that time. Three yard run. And Tulane gets a little bit closer. His 16th rushing touchdown this season and the 28th of his illustrious career 
in New Orleans. That drive. Robert, that just felt like a big touchdown for them. Oh, man, that drive was exactly what the doctor ordered. They needed to quell the momentum, get it back on their side. Big run by Michael Pratt, set it off. And then, of course, their impact player, Tajay Spears, is the one that sets it off for them to get them back in this game. And now they're only down by one score. We talked about Tajay Spears right here with all these moves he's making. Mm. We're going to have to start calling him Tajay Shakespeare. Oh. And then he gets the touchdown, putting the shoulder down, showing you the power. The green wave are rolling. Let's see what we got when we get back. It's an area, especially at our hotel, in and around the gym and the hotel lobby. It really captured the imagination of the people in New Orleans this year. Trojans from the three. Malik Brown out to the 25 yard line. Let's go downstairs to Quinn. Last time Tulane played in a big time bowl, 1939 Sugar Bowl, back when they were in the SEC. And what they're trying to do this year, last year they were 2 and 10. They currently sit at 11 2. They are looking to have the biggest turnaround in FBS history. It was a year last year defined by them being displaced. Lost a lot of close games, but coming into this season, Willie Fritz knew that he had something special, and this fan base has shown up here in Dallas. A great point, Q. A lot of the same players returning just got better after being relocated last year in Birmingham. Williams fires complete at the 40 yard line. Out to the 44, it's Terrell Bynum moving the chains. After Hurricane Ida, they had to relocate to Birmingham. A lot of Uber Eats on the menu, Subway, pizzas. Had to go to the local LA Fitness, Robert, and wait for uh, those weekend warriors to get off the bench press at times. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Willie Fritz, he said they have 31 nights in the hotel, 27 dogs, family, you know, to, to go food. It just, it wasn't an ideal situation. And he also said that their 10 losses were to 10 bowl eligible teams. Yes. So coming into this year, having a little bit of a, what he called an easier schedule, his words, not mine. Yes. Help them out, go out and be able to get to the Sugar Bowl. I asked him about Rock, Bowl. Rock Bottom last year was that 61-21 loss against Mississippi. But boy, it's been onward and upward ever since. Second and four. Williams pulls it out on the RPO, wow. taking a shot downfield, got a man dropped at the 10 yard line. Mario Williams. Well, they're going to say catch. My bad. It's caught at the 12. Or not. There's no way they call it. Williams no. field is an incomplete pass. Third down. Yeah, the official ran down there and looked like he was going to spot it. This was definitely. Drop though, that's what I saw. Yeah, this is why receivers should never go to the ground unless you absolutely have to. He could have caught that and possibly ran in. That's a perfect pass. That should have been a touchdown, but by him going down, now you have to control the catch all the way through the ground. It did not happen. Let's bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin. Yeah, Mark, RJ said it exactly right. There's no way that's a catch. He went to the ground, has to survive the ground. Ball came out. Good and complete pass call. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Third down and four. USC is going to call a timeout. Timeout. We're going to take one with them. Look at the brain trust back after this. Some interesting numbers. It's Cotton Bowl. In Texas, Texas Tech, 95. Okay. Third and four, gets it out quickly. And Williams with some atonement and redemption, making the catch this time as opposed to last time. Picks yes. up six here. When you watch last time, you're going to watch this route. He's going to run a post across the field. And they're really trying to isolate this matchup, get their guy lined up with the safety because safeties play safety because they're supposed to be able to tackle, not cover. 
right here. If Mario Williams just catches this ball, it's perfectly placed and turns up the field, it's a touchdown. But I love that Lincoln Riley came right back to him on the next play. Third down, they needed a, a conversion. They go to their star guy who just made the drop, gives him all the confidence in the world that they haven't lost faith in him. First and 10, Williams. Receiver screen, oh, a little lateral to Brown and nowhere to go for him. Guys bumping their gums out there a little bit. Love to see it. A lot of passion down in the field. Malik Brown and that little bit of prestidigitation, a little trickery. Yeah, and that guy you just saw on the screen, Lance Robinson, the corner. That's the second time we've seen him come up and fill in the run game. Impressively. Impressively transferred from Kansas State. You know, these coaches all week told us that the Kansas State game for Tulane was a turning point of their season because it was validation that their talent was where they needed to be. On second and 11, Williams steps up. Fires, got a man down the sidelines. Incomplete a flag. Rice was downfield in behind Jarius Monroe. You've got to be thinking pass interference here. Oh, yeah. Pass interference. Defense number 11. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Monroe is no slouch. First team All-American conference this year. Transfer out of Nichols State. Now, let's look at all sides of this. You're going to see Brendan Rice and Jarius Monroe going at it. Rice is going to push off right at the last second. But the ball is overthrown. There was no need for Jarius Monroe to dive and try to t uh, alter the throw, or should I say, mm. go after the man. If he didn't do that, ball falls incomplete. There's no flag. But that was pass interference. Williams. Clean pocket again. Drills one. Well picked off Ooh. at the 80-yard line. Monroe says, you're not going to fool me twice. That's his third interception of the season. Look at the jubilation from the crowd here. You know what they're all screaming right now? Tell me. The ball don't lie. <laughs> they're saying it wasn't pass interference, and he's just staring down his receiver. He doesn't even see Jarius Monroe right there. Maybe he thought he was still laying down yeah. <laughs> from the pass interference on the play before. But nice hands there by Monroe. I always joke that DBs play DB for a reason. Right there, he proved it wrong. Beautiful hey, snag. Hey, that was just the fifth interception thrown by that guy, Caleb Williams, all season. A little over six and a half to go in the first half. See if Tulane can recover here and capitalize on the turnover. They hand it off to Spears between the tackles behind Bauman. Take another look. Yeah, so you're going to see that's Jarius Monroe. He's in no man's land. He doesn't have anybody in man coverage. And Caleb Williams tries to fire one in here. And this is when your arm talent can kind of get the best of you. Mm. You think, I can make any throw out there on the field. I can drop this in the bucket right over the top of Jarius Monroe. And the depth perception sometimes can fool us as quarterbacks. He just needed to try to run that one and throw it away. Pratt on second and 10. Completes it over the middle, Jackson. And he takes some ankles at midfield. Jackson on the move. Step in. They're looking at shoe bottoms. Touchdown. Eighty seven yards to the crib. He's got moves so good. He seems like he should be in the Jackson five. Look at him get those knees up. Showing off some of that track mm. technique. Mr. <laughs> Jones, we got ourselves a game. We are knotted at 14. He's been practicing his A and B skips. Great speed.
From at and Stadium here in Arlington, Texas, Mark Jones chopping it up with Robert Griffin the third, Quint cutting it down to the field, and Michael Pratt just took his team downfield in a blink, folks. That 87-yard reception is the longest play of the season for the Green Wave. And they've rallied with 14 consecutive points to tie it at 14. It'll be first and 10 from about the 25 after that Brown kickoff return. Yeah, that was beautiful execution, but you're going to watch this defensive end right here. He's going to drop into protection with the linebacker drop into the flat, and the receiver is going to run a nice little flat slant route in between the two of them. Pratt puts it on him right there, Jaquan Jackson, and as he goes to make his move, look at the defenders that are right there in the middle of the field. Four of them. They've got to close out and make tackles, but we talked about tackling all year for USC, mm -hmm. and then look at this right there. You're talking about Lawrence Keyes III making a block on Makai Blackman to launch Action Jackson into the end zone. Total team effort by the Green Wave, and like we said earlier, Mark, they're rolling. Yes, tied at 14 now. Talked about that receiver's room for the Green Wave, a very talented group. Balanced in terms of the number of receptions they've each made this year and uh, block well for each other as we just saw. Boy, Willie Fritz, what a season for his squad coming back from a two and ten year last year. Talked about that Kansas State game, a game where they really turned the corner, as well as that loss to Southern Mississippi. Which help recalibrate them. Here's Austin Jones. Picks up six on the play. Hicks Jr. making the tackle. Well, their story has been one of resilience all year. And they've come back to tie this game at 14, too. After that loss against Southern Miss, it was a real turning point. Nick Anderson, one of the leaders, not just of the defense, but of the team, spoke to the team in a very impassioned speech right in the locker room that set their course straight for the rest of the season. Catch made complete to Jackson. That's Michael Jackson. Picked up four. Larry Brooks making the tackle under five minutes to go in the first half. You know, Mark, I talked about riding the green wave as one of the keys. Look at Tulane's last two drives. Ten plays, 160 yards, 300 and, I mean, uh, three minutes and 53 seconds, mm. two touchdowns. So not only are they scoring, they're scoring fast. Well, Talk about a tidal wave coming in on you. The the Men have been knocked out in this time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just ask Mike Tyson. <laughs> third, third and one. And that last play under review. With 4.35 to go. But, yeah, talked about the great season that the Green Wave have had. The Kansas State game, the Southern Miss loss, and subsequent bounce back really helped them get to this point. We mentioned Nick Anderson, the linebacker, number one on that defensive crew. One of the real big voices. This is the play that's under review. Let's bring in Matt Austin to break it down for us. Yeah, I think this is a great stop uh, since they did rule him short. It looked like the runner did a great job of getting his hand down, keeping the rest of his body off the field, and got to the first down before his elbow hit. So I think this is going to be overturned. It looked like they made their mind up, Matt, pretty quickly there. Here's the call. After further review, the ball carrier made the line to gain just beyond the 35. First down, USC. Matt's on point. Hey. Matt, Matt, you're on point, man. Thank you. <laughs> And a great effort that time to get the first down. Hey, coming up next, number 11, Penn State squares off against number 8, Utah. In the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl game, presented by Prudential. Out in Pasadena, California, amongst the bucolic scenery there. Wonderful backdrop. Under four and a half to go here in the first half. Williams had a defender at his feet. Gets it to his receiver. That's Ford. Who stopped up. About four yards shy of the first down by Dorian Williams. Got seven on the play. And the coverage you just saw there.
by Chris Hampton, the defensive coordinator for Tulane, is what's making Caleb Williams have to be so patient. They dropped everybody in the coverage there. His checkdowns were the only outlets. The deep shots down the field were all covered because there's so many bodies dispersed throughout the field. Nice job by Caleb of not trying to do too much. Second and two, they're going to keep it on the ground and get a first down. Austin Jones in for Travis Dye, who's out, picked up four on the play. Ever since Caleb Williams picked up a football, his dad Carl and his mom Dana got him ready for this moment, for this wonderful career he's having so far. Dad, a real estate developer, they invested a lot of love and time into their son. Did hot yoga as a kid and special diet. Had him see a sports psychologist. Everything to make his dream a reality. Hand off to Relief Brown, bouncing it outside. Oh, nice hurdle. That would make Aries Merritt proud. That kind of hurdle. Or Robert Griffin III in the 400 hurdles. Hey, shout out to Aries <laughs> Merritt. World record holder in the 110 hurdles. And you see Relief Brown here just spin out. This isn't even about patience. It's just about athleticism. And Aries, woo -hoo, you know, got to make sure you pick that tri leg up a yeah. little bit. Uh, get just it down a, quick, huh? Just a little bit. Get it up and down real quick, man. 14-yard <laughs> gain. Nice run by Brown. Of course, Quincy Watts, track coach at USC, would approve of that. Here he comes again. Brown. Right down the pipe, kick the turbo in, touchdown! Wow! 39 yards for the score. Just an easy inside zone run, and look at this big hole in the middle only the ref is in the way you really can't count that as a missed tackle but he does a nice job fending it off with the stiff arm and then it's all speed for the 5 8 185 pound relief brown showing maybe why he should have got some more carries earlier yeah. in the year. i don't know i don't know they got some guys there robert no coach has seemingly taking advantage of the transfer portal and its benefits more than lincoln riley right now that was a career-long run by Relique Brown. Hey, next Monday, number one Georgia takes on number three TCU in the college football playoff national championship presented by AT&T. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. We'll have pregame coverage all day long, but for this matchup, we'll have you covered from every platform, TV, radio, digital, so many ways to watch and listen to the biggest game of the year. Robert, which one of those uh, platforms you're going to be on? Uh, all of them? I don't know, Mark. Are you, are you going to be on a platform? Are you coming the with me to go platform? <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Uh, who do you like in the game? Oh, man. I think it really comes down to if Kendra Miller is able to go for TCU. Right. You know, he missed the majority of that game early. Had his leg kind of got a little tangled up in, in a tackle there against Michigan. But Amari D. Mercado, the running back for TCU, came out and played extremely well. Sure did. Max Duggan. He has this everybody in, in the world feeling like TCU is a team of destiny. Georgia, with their comeback, showed that they are vulnerable. And if there was anybody that could get it done, I wouldn't doubt Max Duggan and TCU getting the win. Wow, Stetson Bennett was outstanding, too, for his squad. And you saw the well of emotion after the game in the Georgia quarterback. Yeah. Such an emotional time. Going to be a great game coming up. Trojans have regain the lead here. This is Lawrence Keyes on the kickoff return. Out of bounds right around the 25 yard line. Hey, coming up on the Mercedes Benz halftime report, Reese, Desmond, David live in Pasadena. Who will rule the Rose Bowl? The college football playoffs most compelling championship game yet, amongst the other things that they'll be chopping up. Have you done a game? In Pasadena yet? Have you been to Pasadena? You've been to Pasadena. I've been to right? Pasadena. You played in the game, right? What? You played in the Rose Bowl, right? In the Rose Bowl? Yeah. I mean, I did a Run Rich Run event at the Rose Bowl. <laughs> okay. For, you know, charity, yeah. giving back to kids. You that got a Heisman on the shelf. I just assume stuff. You St. Know what I mean? Jude Hospital. You know, we, we just try to do what we can to make an impact. <laughs> Pratt over the middle. Incomplete behind Bauman. 
his intended receiver. 2-11 to go in the first half. Coaches like to say that Pratt has vicious execution between the lines. He has that type of mentality. He's much smarter as a runner now, much more discerning than he used to be. As coach said, hey, we're better as a team when you're out there. Don't always try to run everybody over. Sometimes you got to live to play another down. Second and ten. Keeps it himself, and he got down safely. A good gain as we go down to Q. Proprietary and unique to this two-lane offense, the fact that all the players, that's offensive linemen, skill, quarterback, they all wear wristbands. It's the only team in the country where all the players wear wristbands. You see them, they'll look at their play sheet. There's 70 plays on that wristband. They don't need to huddle, so it's like they were in a huddle. And this maintains that they're all on the same page and no signs are stolen. Mm. Q just got to make sure to collect those wristbands afterwards. Third and three, Pratt in and out of the arms of Jaquan Jackson. It'll be fourth down coming up, and in comes the punt unit. Wow, had his hands on it. Yeah, as they say, as a receiver, if it touches your hands, you probably should catch it, especially if it touches both of them. Right. Right there, Michael Pratt does a nice job. Give him a, a, an easy ball, I believe, to catch. Maybe the receiver just once again tried to do something with it before he actually looked it in. Nice little connection there afterwards. You saw Pratt and Jackson collaborate. Like Jackson was doing push-ups with that little punitive measure, self-imposed. Yeah. Did I see that? You usually see that <laughs> when guys make a mistake that they know is uncharacteristic of them. Caught on the fly by Michael Jackson. 36-yard punt. Time now for the AT&T countdown to the college football playoff national championship. We had TCU this year and got a great look at Max Duggan. And yep. He's even better now, Robert, than he was when we saw him earlier in the season. Yeah, he What's has. his secret sauce, and how does he use it in this championship game? This right here, 14 of 29. Some people would say, wow, that's a terrible completion percentage. Right. But they throw the football down the field so often. He is unafraid. He doesn't care what these stats look like. All he wants to do is win. And I don't even think offensively they, pay, they played their best game against Michigan. If Max Duggan increases his execution incrementally, I think that gives them a bigger chance to beat the vaunted oh, right, right, right. They get it to the outside. Caught Washington with a nice sprint after the catch into the arms of his teammates and coaches. 112 to go, 15-yard gain. Caleb Williams responded after that interception that he threw earlier. Took his team into the end zone on the last drive. Williams so far, 16 of 25 passing. A couple of touchdowns, one interception. Got it out quick again. Washington going to be stopped up about a yard shy of that first down. And USC with one timeout remaining as the clock hits 58 seconds to go. Up at the line quickly. Green Wave never got lined up. The catch made by Rice. And a nice move. Rice pushed out inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal. And, man, Caleb Williams and the offense efficient with their time here. Yes, they were. We talked about the vision of Caleb Williams. Early on in that play, he saw that no one was covering Brendan Rice. He forgot the read, put it right on him, and Brendan Rice shows you his playmaking ability after the catch. Awesome job by Caleb Williams. Don't be afraid. If you see it, let that bad boy rip. 36-yard gain, first and goal. Green Wave have three timeouts remaining. Trojans with one. They hand it off to Jones. Runs it into the boundary. Tried to get north-south, but stopped up there by Dorian Williams, who was one of the first guys to get there, one of the leaders of that defense. He and Nick Anderson. Dorian Williams, NFL talent. They'll need him on this stop. Monroe makes the tackle this time on Jones, and... USC is going to call their final timeout of the half. Timeout, USC, their third and final of the first half. 
30 second timeout. Third and goal coming up, Robert. Yes. They've got a mobile quarterback. Yes. They've got Austin Jones, who's done well on the ground. Mal Malik Brown as well. And a host of receivers. Where do you go here on third and goal? Yeah, I mean, you, you just mentioned it right there. I know Caleb Williams might not be 100%, but I'm spreading this bad boy out. Try to get them to dictate a light box, give him a run pass option, and also make sure that their kicking team is ready to go in case they do get tackled short. Mm. They don't have any more timeouts, so they're going to have to do one of those hurry-up field goals to kind of get points before the half. Williams has connected on his last five passes, seven of his last eight. Here's a look at Dennis Lynch. Place kicker for USC. But 13 is thinking six. And as you see it here, they've got two screen possibilities one here, one there, top and bottom of your screen. Timeout, two lane, their first of the half. 30 second timeout. Well, after that loss to Utah, Caleb Williams. While he was in New York at the Heisman ceremony, let everybody know that he had some work to do. Yeah, he, he said that he had unfinished business. He was going to come back. He knew he had to come back, but let's go and listen to kind of what he talked about at the Heisman ceremony. They say either change your dreams or change your habits, and I damn sure weren't going to change my, my dreams. Glad you didn't change yours either. But we both know the job's not done. Robert, he had me at the Gucci fit. I'm, I'm not going to lie. He had the Gucci sport coat on and pads. And he was cleaner than the Board of Health. Yeah, and he talked about unfinished business. But they got unfinished business right here on this drive. Let's see if they can punch it in for six. Bynum in motion. Trips right. Williams rolls out that way. Fighters. Touchdown in the back of the end zone. Rice. That's how you finish business. Marks, we talk about it. You got an athletic quarterback. Give him a run pass option. They scored a touchdown earlier in the red zone on a sprint out. So what do they do here? They do the same thing. And this time, Caleb buys time, doesn't try to run back across the field. All his receivers are coming into his vision. And right there, instant rice for the touchdown. <laughs> I don't know what you do with that in terms of having that kind of talent at quarterback, and being that mobile. And I think all questions about his hamstring have been answered so far. I yeah. mean, he doesn't look like he's slowed down at all. And, and for me, with the hamstring, what it comes down to is he's been able to be creative. He's been elusive in the pocket. Is he running for 40 yard gains? No, but he's a, he's mobile enough to the fact of this defense is having to cover for five, six, seven seconds at a time. And after that touchdown, it just makes you believe that drop on third down. But Jaquan Jackson and, right. and, and Tulane just now they're down by 14. That Unbelievable. Quick. <laughs> Big time play. Big time play in this game. One of the most popular players in all of college athletics and one of the most highly compensated players in college athletics as well. He's got a really nice bag to go along with that impressive resume. Deals with headphone companies. Trading cards, websites, owns a stake in a men's grooming company. You give him Tulane a haircut right now. Let's go down to Q. You could see it in Caleb's eyes when he came out before pregame to get warmed up. He talked about the job not done, not being satisfied, satisfied, but his play, the fact that he's playing in this game, those actions speak louder than any words and he has set an example for this whole team as he did in the Heisman ceremony when he flew his entire line to New York City there's gratitude there's overcome setbacks but for me right now it's action not words amazing young man and we gotta put this first half to bed it's the second time today that Tulane has trailed by 14 points 
Let's go back to Q, who's with head coach Lincoln Riley. The 14-point lead as we get ready to kick it here in the third quarter. The Heisman Trophy winner, Caleb Williams, was brilliant in that first half. 20-29 passing, three touchdown passes versus one interception. Let's take a look at the first half stats brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Look at the time of the two drives. What jumps off the page at you there, Robert? Right, Anything in particular? Right there, that first drive, 17 plays, 75 yards, nine minutes and two seconds. I believe that was the longest opening drive in Cotton Bowl history. Yes. Just unbelievable. And here's what he did. Here's what it looked like. Yeah, we talked about this early. He has all the tools in his toolbox, right? The offensive line, we're worried about the protection. This is earlier in the season that gave him 4.1 seconds. He's not afraid to hold on to the football, to go out and create, keep his eyes down the field, and then when it's time to go, he can go make moves because he's got more moves than a military family. Mm. But here, in this game, talking about the hamstring, he's got the time again. He breaks the pocket, get the back door cut, keeps his eyes down the field, waits to the very last second and then takes a bet on Brendan Rice down the football field. But hey, Michael Pratt said, hey, I know he's got a Heisman, but I got something for you too. Right here, he goes on a big run down the field. Then he comes back. Jaquan Action Jackson with an 87-yard touchdown. Michael Pratt said, hey, I'm going to go ahead and tie the longest touchdown pass in Cotton Bowl history mm -hmm. with Syracuse's Jer Schwades to Ernie Johnson in the 1960 Classic. This game has been bananas. <laughs> I want to see Tulane continue to throw the football and challenge these DBs down the field. Let's go down to Quinn. Uh, what I have found most fascinating, most revealing in this game is Caleb Williams and his interactions with his teammates. You are seeing this young quarterback absolutely grow up and become the predominant leader in all of college football. The Heisman winner is in command. He is commanding respect from his teammates and he's showing the intangible leadership. He has set an example down here. No hangover from that Utah game and here is Spears out into the secondary. Man, he popped the clutch. Got all the way down to the 30 yard line before McCutcheon finally brought him down. Tajay Spears with a resounding answer here. Look at this. Just gets skinny through the hole. I called him Tajay Shakespeare's early, and he shows you why. But he's got the speed to almost hit the home run there. If they get him rolling, that is their key to getting back in the game. But it's still going to be throwing the football that's going to make them try to come out on top. They're down 14. They need more runs like that from Tajay Spears. 47 yards in all. Crack. Incomplete. Tried to hit Spears as a receiver that time. You know, he gets it done on the football field and in the classroom. A tremendous student with a 3.5 GPA, graduated, returned from that major knee injury that he suffered last season, has all the intangibles to be a great back, and has been all that in a bag of chips for Tulane this year. Everybody pointing at everybody else. False start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. Second down. When we spoke with Spears earlier and asked him what's the importance of this game, he says, This means everything, man. Uh, <laughs> Those yeah. are his words. Yeah, it, this it, means everything, man. They weren't afraid to shy away from the fact that they view this as their Super Bowl. Yep. They want Tulane to be here more routinely, but they want to maximize this opportunity. And like we said, if they get him rolling here in the second half, they can go a long way to them not only just clawing back, but trying to get the win. Pratt comes back against the formation. Bauman got a nice block and is brought down inside the 20 at the 17-yard line inside the red zone now. And you can see if they go all eye candy to the left, fake to the back, nice little tight end screen back to the right. These are what we call complex screens as a quarterback. I'm going to do all this ballsmanship, and I'm going to just dump it off for behind the line of scrimmage and hope we can get a big gain right there. They did get it. Maybe if they had a wide receiver there, he could have split two and had a bigger one. But they'll take the 16 yards and no roll with it. No doubt. They fake the jet sweep. Pratt keeps it himself. 
Took the tackler along for a little bit of a ride. That was Max Williams. Got a three yard ride and a three yard pickup by Michael Pratt. I like to change the tempo a lot with him in the ball game, and you see him peering at the wristband that they all have. Quinn did an outstanding report on that a little bit earlier. Yeah, and those wristbands, they just decrease the amount of errors that'll happen in communication, and it also allows everybody to play just a tick faster. Second and five. Keys in motion. They give us the Spears up the middle. He's brought down after a gain of about three on the play. Let me get back to the wristbands. How come more teams don't do that, Robert? Well, there's a negative connotation around wristbands that, oh, if your team is wearing wristbands or your quarterback's wearing a wristband, he can't call the play. It, or It's too simple for them. But I, I always tell people this. The greatest quarterback of all time in the NFL, mm -hmm. Tom Brady, has right. worn a wristband his entire career. Don't be afraid to use that wristband. It can help you in so many different ways and alert you to things on certain plays. And I think that's what Tulane has been doing with their skill guys. Lots in motion. They fake the jet sweep. Spears gets the call. Man, it's going to be close. I'm not sure that he had enough to get there. Gentry was there to make the tackle. Along with Tulio Pupu. He got a very auspicious spot. And a first and goal now for the Green Wave. Did you just follow up auspicious after saying poo poo? Yes, I did. Oh, man, you were on a roll Tulio right now. Poo -poo. Yep, Solomon. Great defensive end there for USC. <laughs> Sounds biblical. Spears. Broke a couple of tackles. Happy New Year, New Orleans. And they are right back in it. A seven yard run. It looked like he carried that many guys into the end zone with him, Robert. Yes, it did. We talked about it. Hey, they're going to have to throw the football at the end of the day because USC is going to try to put up these big numbers. But if they get Tajay Spears rolling, right here you see him on the run. Oops, he did it again, scoring a touchdown. Early in the first half, they got him rolling. They knew going into halftime coming out, they got to get this guy the ball because he is the heart and soul of their offense. His second rushing touchdown of the game, and the margin cut to seven in a blink to start the third quarter of play for the Green Wave. Got to get Spears the football, but the key is getting him on the field. Keeping those legs driving. A wake of tacklers left behind, and laissez le bon temps rouler. Let the good times roll. He's done it with leadership. He's done it with the body language. This guy is the complete package. Heisman winner, Caleb Williams. Great job, Q. You know, after winning the Heisman in New York, Williams raced back to USC, the campus, to take final exams, work out and train, and host recruits. Because he's all about team. And building it for the future as well. Brown on the kickoff return. Out to the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from there. You know, Robert, we kind of alluded to the fact that, you know, it caught a lot of eyeballs when he left Norman, Oklahoma last year with Lincoln Wiley, came to USC. Yeah. But, I mean, if you're a quarterback or a four or five star prospect that wants to play at a high level. Yeah. Why wouldn't you make the move that benefits you the best? Yeah, Not I mean, just Williams, but I mean, he was a five-star guy, but everybody else. Yeah, I mean, you definitely should. And I feel like with Caleb Williams, his story is just a little undertold. Didn't play his senior year of, uh, uh, in high school. Then he goes to Oklahoma, takes over in the middle of one of the biggest robberies in all the sport between Texas and Oklahoma. And then his coach leaves. He follows him to USC. And the success that he's had, that's why you saw the emotion from both of them at the Heisman Trophy ceremony. I just know that for, for Caleb Williams, what he's done and how he has managed this situation, you saw Q just depict right. all the things that have happened on the field. Well, Caleb himself and Lincoln Riley said he was not ready to lead a college you know, organization or, or you know, franchise if it was the NFL right. last year. But this year, he's shown you why the growth, the steps he's taken as a leader to know that, hey, now it's on my shoulders. I can do this, and you've seen it down in and down out. You know what I love? The fact that he gets Lincoln Riley for another year, and I love the fact he took his offensive line yes. to the Heisman Trophy ceremony with him in New York. So, That's something that would never be possible without NIL.
to go from L.A. to New York on a private jet. Do you know how much that costs? Go and tell the people at home. <laughs> on a receiver screen, this is Hudson. And Hudson out to about the 45-yard line. If you notice, Mark ignored that question because <laughs> it costs way too much hey, money. Middle, middle seat. Way too much money. Middle, middle seat coach class, baby. Pass those peanuts back. Name, hey. image, and likeness defined. There's what it is, and it has translated into life-changing opportunities, finally, for collegiate athletes who have a chance to change the arc of their lives by being able to bring some money home while in college. Pass complete to the sidelines. That's Jones and close to another first down. Williams has completed his last nine in a row, by yeah. the way. And and you're kind of seeing his growth. When I talked to them earlier this year, they said, we don't want Caleb to always rely on his athleticism. Right. When he does, it's special. But he's got to be a facilitator of the ball. He's got to work within the offense so that, hey, when your hamstring's not 100%, you can still go out, put up 28 points, and dish the ball out to all of your offensive weapons. He's doing that right now. First and 10 from midfield. Out of the backfield, incomplete, dropped by Austin Jones. Well, here are our first NBA Wednesday matchups of 2023 on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Giannis and the Bucks squaring off against Spicy P, Pascal Siakam and the Raptors. I'll be calling that game 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Then out to Los Angeles, LeBron and the Lakers hosting Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. Our coverage tips with NBA countdown at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Boy, LeBron James just turned 38 years old and had, what was it, 46 points on his birthday. Man, act your age, LeBron. Yeah, you almost had a 40-point <laughs> triple-double. The dude is unbelievable. He's aging backwards. Unbelievable. The Benjamin Button of NBA. Is he is he the Tom Brady of the, of the NBA? <sighs> Listen, yeah, yeah. My, my goat is yeah. still Michael Jordan, but yeah. Is, yeah. He, is he the Tom Brady? He's just yeah. doing it in such a... But he's doing a little more than taking six steps back and throwing a football every game. That is very Don't true. disrespect. A little bit more dynamic component involved. Third and six coming up. Oh, you just fired up all football fans with that statement. Oh, it's all good, though. Mad respect for both of them. Here we go, third and six. He's been relying on Mario Williams a lot in these types of situations, but he's not on the field. Look for him to try to work. Time's Washington right there. A clear in motion. Williams takes a shot downfield. Wide open. Caught. Touchdown. Washington with the catch kept his feet in bounds had to wait for the signal from the official the official's arms went up in the air to signal touchdown yeah the official looked a little uns unsure about it as well there was a few heartbeats in between the time he made the call so watch his feet here as he makes the catch really on the field is a touchdown the previous play is under further no, review that's not a catch guys unfortunately that is not a touchdown. That's going to come back. As you see, as he makes the catch, he never gets a foot down. He hit the pylon. Let's bring in our rules analyst, Matt Austin. Matt, what's the translation of the rule and what you saw? How do you reconcile those? Well, from what I can see, I don't think his foot ever touched down in the green. The first contact is with the pylon. That's out of bounds. That's an incomplete pass. So I didn't see any pebbles come up where the, you would see when the, if the foot if the toe dragged. So I think this is going to end up being incomplete. Man, that is. Mm. I agree. The, the little rubber pieces of tire that you usually right. see from the turf, it right. doesn't come up. But did that toe touch on the white? I don't know, yeah, man. Close. I, I, it that's is close. close. It does not look like the toe came down, so I'm right there with Matt Jouston. He hit the pylon, so from, you know, two, three stories up right. where we are. You see his feet, like, right there. It's like... Yeah, so... It's like as you go back here and you, you look at that toe, right there, you don't see anything pop up, you know? As it's going like it's going to graze the ground, you don't see anything flare up like that. Yeah, so. even, that looks like an incomplete pass. Matt, now that we've seen it a few times, your thoughts? 
Yeah, I, I still stand by what I said before. I don't think the foot touched the ground. The pylon is out of bounds in the end zone, so I don't think that's a catch. All right, they're still taking a look at it. I tell you what, the bottom line on this, somebody in that green wave secondary fell asleep. Oh, yeah. Here's the call. After further review, the pass is incomplete. The receiver spins up the pylon, which is out of bounds. It'll be fourth down at the 47-yard line. The pylon is out of bounds. Yes. So, yep. Matt Austin, that, that would mean that if he touched the pylon first and the foot then came down in bounds, it still would have been incomplete, correct? That's correct. The pylon is out of bounds in the end zone. So if you touch that first, you're out of bounds. Okay. The well, last time on 36, I said they should go after and try to get the ball to Todd Washington right here on fourth and six, right in the middle of the field. There's no need to punt. So let's see who they go to on this one. I like the matchup right here with Mario Williams. He's been Caleb's go-to guy all day if they do snap this ball. With the Oklahoma transfer. Play clock is down to five. They got to get busy here. Williams looks Williams' way. And a sliding grab to the aforementioned Mario Williams. I said it on the previous down, third and six, that he was not on the field, so look for Taj. Now Mario's on the field. The Williams brothers make a great connection. Caleb buys time, and look at where he puts this ball. The ball placement is perfect. Low, wow. so the receiver can protect himself. The guy on the outside has no chance of making a play on that and falling off of the receiver. Whew. This is high-level football from Caleb Williams. Biggest issue, talking to Willie Fritz at halftime, pass rush. They rush three, Caleb stands around forever. They rush five, he breaks out and goes deep. They just can't figure it out defensively right now. You see a nice stop by Hodges off the edge, but the pass rush has been the biggest dilemma for Tulane and Coach Willie F Fritz. Great observation and report there, Q, because speaking of pass rush, Hodges, who just made that tackle, Robert, he's their best pass rusher, first team all-conference for Tulane. Yes, he is, and we mentioned it earlier that he led the American Conference in tackles for loss last year. Now they're trying to get him to get back and be more aggressive. They did more drop eight, and their defensive coordinator, Chris Hampton, said, listen, if you if you rush three, Caleb's gonna stand back there and run around. If you, get, if you try to get after him and you lose contain, he'll burn you with his legs. Right now, they feel like they can't win for losing. Second and 11. Escaping harm. Williams sets. Oh. There was contact. No flag thrown. Brendan Rice, the intended receiver. Larry Brooks appeared to run up his back. But seen otherwise by the officials. Good play defensively. And third and 11 coming up. Larry Brooks there to yeah. break that pass up. You know, Mark, the difference between that play right there by Larry Brooks and the pass interference that was called on Jarius Monroe earlier is that Larry Brooks has a right to try to go get the football. Okay. So when that ball's in the air, he's got clear vision on it. He's attacking downhill, trying to make a play on it. Yes, he hit Brendan Rice early, but he does have the right to that space. Jarius Monroe earlier had his back to the ball. That's pass interference. They're 9 of 11 on third down. Williams retreating and wisely throws it away. The outside the pocket, ball went beyond the line of scrimmage. Man in the area, Nick no Anderson. No foul grounding, the quarterback was outside the tackle box. Pass across the line of scrimmage. Fourth down. As noted. So fourth down from the 35-yard line. Dennis Lynch coming in to attempt a field goal. This will be from 52 yards out. Has a career long of 49. Got it down. And just short. Ooh. So the green wave will have the football and a chance to come closer. Man. I mean, that was inches away. Lynch gave it a good ride that time. Yeah, you'll see this kick by Dennis Lynch. When you look at his picture, he looks like the kid from Bad Santa. That was a bad <laughs> kick, just short. <laughs>
to this point seven point lead for the Trojan with 708 to go here in the third quarter. Ajay Spears in the backfield. And a RPO. Pass complete at midfield. It's caught by Deuce Watts. And now they're saying sort of me incomplete. You know, although Deuce Watts dropped that pass, I, I love what I just saw from Tulane's offensive line. You know, Mark, we talk about this. Go ahead. We talk about how many yeah. plays that they've had. And you can see this graphic. <laughs> they're down seven points, 31 fewer plays, 121 fewer yards. I mean, the list goes on and on. USC is letting Tulane hang around. This is a really good football team. Right. First and ten. For the toss into the boundary. Spears and good tackling led by Davis, number nine there, coming up from his safety spot. Tell you what, guys were rattling each other's fillings with this kind of hard tackling. Lifting your weights when you're making and taking hits like that, Robert. Yeah, it reminds me of those, <laughs> those Under Armour commercials. Click, clack. You could hear it right yeah. there, man. Third and seven coming up as a result. Spears the lone back, four receivers. Clack on the move, going to do it with his legs. Get the first down and then some. There's a flag down, though. Let's see if this play stands. He talked about Michael Pratt's ability to run. Well, we've seen it a few times already here. Picked up 23. Let's see if it stands. Personal foul, face mask, defense 51. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. Uh, they're going to tack on a few more yards on that. And they're going to be in great field position here. Yeah, you're going to see 51 right there when he comes across. Ooh. He grabs Pratt's helmet. The face mask pulls the neck back. He's going to feel that tomorrow. But right now, he's thinking about that first down as you see it right there. Ooh. He that got is all of it. painful. He got all of that one, like you said, Mark. But nice job by Michael Pratt. Not freaking out. Right. Use your legs. Go get the first down. And now, look, they're in threatening position to try to tie this game up. From the 24. Pratt keeps it himself, holding that ball high and tight. And good open field tackling by Makai Blackman. It was Blackman that came to the defense of the coaching staff. In particular, Coach Grinch, the defensive coordinator, in wake of that disappointment against Utah. And he said, folks, and I'm paraphrasing here, never mind. Coach Grinch can blankety blank coach. <laughs> These guys believe yeah. in their coaches. They believe in, in what they've been preaching to them and teaching to them all season long. So they take it personal when their coaches get talked bad about. Off the pick. Pat going to be sacked at the 26-yard line. Devoured. Eric Gentry leading the way. Had some company as well with Benton. Yeah, you're going to see the play action fake it right there. They convert from run stop to pass rush. And the two lane offensive line and the tight end right there, number 87, just didn't give Michael Pratt an opportunity to even throw the football away. Sometimes I'll say, hey, don't hold on to the ball so long. But in that one, he didn't really have a chance. Yeah. And keep in mind, the Trojans lead the FBS in turnover takeaway, plus 22 on the season. And Pratt's going to be sacked. Front down actually right around the line of scrimmage by Davis. So this is a huge win for the Trojan defense. Impervious when it counted in the shadows of the red zone. Valentino Ambrosio going to come in and try and attempt a field goal for the green wave here. Yeah, after giving up the big run to Pratt with the, the tacked on yardage for the face mask to come out and get a stop and potentially hold him to a field goal, that's a win all day for the Trojans. 42 yards out. Clean. Mm. And we got a four point game. And this matchup between the Pac 12 and the American Conference. Who said it? 
Robert. The Trojans let the Tulane squad hang around. <laughs> you see how excited Willie Fritz is about <laughs> that. And his counterpart, we got to play some football. Back after this. Picking up the tab for students from each school that so these passionate fans could come cheer on their teams. You gotta say, Robert, the best nation in the world is a donation. Yes, sir. Nice move by Taco Bell. Man, brought him here free. A little over four minutes to go from the three yard line. Malik Brown going east west and running out of room. And a late flag looked like we got a face mask. Boy. And they had him pinned inside the 10, Robert. Yep, you're going to see him reach, reach, reach. And there's the face mask. Man. Had his fingers all up in his kitchen there. Look at that. Uh, get your fingers on my face. Oh, my goodness. They talking knocked out the too. cameraman. Is he okay? Wow. He <laughs> took a hit. Got a flag down at the five. The officials still conferring. Yeah. Got a flag down and a man down. Yeah. Flag down at the five. Man down on the sidelines. There he is right the guy. there. Readjust your hat, man. Looks like he's Tough okay. Guy. Yeah. You okay? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Things happen pretty fast down here, doesn't it? Occupational hazard, bud. Keep your head on the <laughs> swivel, my man. <laughs> Always. <laughs> he got the shot, though, Q, I'm sure. He got, he got the, the shot. Money Did shot. you get the shot? I got it. <laughs> I, got got it. I got it. That's what matters. There you go. Yeah, you really got to be careful down here. During the return holding, receiving team number 10 is declined. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, 35 receiving team is accepted. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Wow, we had a lot going on there. So, didn't quite go the way we were thinking with face masks. What? There was none. There was no face mask indication, and it's going to be backed up all the way to the two-yard line. Yeah, you see number two right here. Takes the shot there. Maybe that distracted them from the face mask that's about to happen. Yeah. That was Dorian Williams. By their own goalpost from their own two-yard line. First and ten. Williams is going to hand it off to Austin Jones. And go back to uh, Matt Austin. Explain what happened on that last kickoff. Well, it's a little bit unfortunate because there were two fouls on USC. One was backup field. One was the blindside block you see right there at about the five-yard line. So they have the option of declining one and accepting the one that's most advantageous, which they did. Now I'm going to get back to you, buddy, because Rice is on the loose. Down to the 17-yard line. So they have erased the penalties that cost them. And already in the red zone, Ready to score. They didn't get too cute on the first play. They ran the football against a defense that, that struggled stopping the run. And then on the second one, they allowed Caleb Williams to unleash a frozen rope down the middle of the field to Brendan Rice, who honestly looked like his daddy right there. <laughs> Looking like Jerry Rice running down the football field. 74-yard pickup. From the 19. Kept it. Let's go back to Matt Austin. Matt, finish your point on us on the penalties. Well, it doesn't make any difference now, but what I was going to say is, unfortunately, they missed the face mask, which would have allowed USC yes. to accept offsetting fouls. They would have replayed the kickoff. So, yeah. at this point, it doesn't matter. All right, Matt, thank you. And, yeah, they eradicated that mistake with the quickness. 74 yards later. As they say, Mark, the ball don't lie. Man. Right there, the ball found Brendan Rice because that face mask was missed. Football gods are watching over this game right now. Second down and 10. Epps is split into the boundary. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Williams looks the other way. Fires into the end zone. 
incomplete. No flag as Brendan Rice was working against Lance Robinson, the all conference performer, the Kansas State transfer. Sets up a third down and 10. What do you like in terms of a play call here, Robin? Well, who has been the man every third down, it seems like, this game? It's been Mario Williams. Yes. He's been the one that Caleb Williams has been the most comfortable with. The matchup on the inside of the slot has been great and advantageous for him all day. This is him right here. Let's see if that's where they go. Relief Brown, who's been targeted as a receiver a lot, the line the running back spit to the top of your screen. There he is. Williams spins out of harm's way. Pulls. Caught! No signal. He was pushed out of bounds at the one. Brendan Rice stung like his daddy out there. What a catch. They mark it at the one-yard line. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to... I think this might actually be a touchdown. Watch. Brendan Rice makes this catch. Look at his feet. Touchdown. Oh, oh. Touchdown. Woo! What a play. They need to, they'll be looking at this. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, tell us about what you just saw in the replay. Because Lincoln Riley's right thinking the same thing. As long as he extends the ball inside the or field, over the pylon, this pass, is a touchdown. Short of the goal line. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, if that ball's if that ball's over the pylon or inside it, it's a touchdown. So you're going to need a good view from the end zone, and this might be it. There it is, and this angle isn't quite as definitive. You see him extend the football, but from that angle, the depth perception is a little skewed. Yeah. Talk to him about that depth perception, Mark. <laughs> Watch, nice catch. Good awareness on the sideline. Call that toe drag swag, stays in bounds. Ball's in the end zone. Yeah, that is a touch. touchdown, yeah. people. What a play. Man. What a play. Brendan Rice has been on point. Some people out there wondered who was going to be the guy that stepped up because Jordan Addison wasn't playing due to an ankle injury and he's prepping for the draft. Yep. Well, so far we've seen it. Brendan Rice steps up. Mario Williams has been stepping up. Rice has six catches for 173 yards today. Matt, do you think that's a touchdown? Oh, absolutely. All right. Yeah, that last view from the from the it looked like a handheld camera from the back of the end zone. Looked like he definitely got it inside the pylon to me. Yeah, great awareness by Rice to extend the football. Here's another look. Here it is again. Nice catch. Feet stay in bounds. He knew it, Extends too. Extends the ball. Look at that. I'm at the pylon, boys. Number one, the ball placement allowed Rice to shift his body work and get his toes in. But the great body control, an amazing play. He knew right away that that was a touchdown. If this is not a touchdown, I'm going to walk out of this place. After further review, we have a touchdown. And Seymour possessed the ball inside the pylon. Quint, you don't have to walk anywhere. It's a touchdown. 124 to go in the third quarter. Brendan Rice out here careering today, putting up a number. 174 yards. He's man, treating, oh that, treating that Tulane secondary like corduroy, wearing him out. Extra point good. And the lead up to 11. Look at the reaction. <laughs> yeah. He knew. And you talk about that drive, the two big plays that got them all the way down the field from their own one yard line. Brendan Rice, Brendan Rice. And then there's the reaction on the other side. The pendulum excitement from USC. And the, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Yep. From the two line fans. Maybe we can get her some Cafe de Mon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's always a good panacea. Great medicine for everyone's ills. Caleb Williams, meanwhile, 384 yards passing, and the meter is still running here in the third quarter. 26 of 40. And the most Heisman like numbers. Very Heisman like. <laughs> and, and the thing that's the most impressive about this is that Caleb Williams came into this game not 
no business decisions, no, hey, I'll chuck it up to next year. He said, I'm going to come out here, I'm going to play with my guys. And to do that after winning the Heisman, after flying your whole offensive line to the ceremony, after all of the NIL deals and things that are going on in his life, football is the priority. That's awesome to see. That kick goes out of bounds. It'll be first and 10 from the 35. Robert, let's take a look at this touchdown and tell me what the key was. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about Caleb Williams going out here and just creating, once again, doing what he does best. You're going to see him drop back to pass. He's going to do the backdoor cut, come out way over here, and he's got his eyes down the football field. Look, he's looking here. He's looking here. He's looking here. He's trying to find someone to get the football to, and Brendan Rice, at the last second, comes back to the ball, really making a beautiful catch. It just makes me think, man, guys, he's his daddy's son, right? <laughs> He's his daddy's son. He is out there balling. You see them working him on the sideline. That's what we've seen from Jerry Rice. Yes, he is on YouTube, and you can watch him. <laughs> the greatest of all time. His son is having a great game. You might have to find Google to find this guy. Spears! What an answer! Tajay Spears all the way down inside the 10, inside the 5, finally corralled by Bullock. 61-yard gain. Hey, Tajay Spears said, I got a baby bottle for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to baby bottle this USC defense. Look at him right down the middle. We call him Tajay Shakespeare's, and he's got the moves, guys. I'm telling you, speed, power, vision. Right here, he tried to do to Kalen Bullock what Utah did to him. But Bullock showed, hey, I've been lifting these last couple months. Yeah. So he gets him down before he gets there. Eight straight games, over 100 yards rushing for Tajay Spears. That fires incomplete. Intended for Deuce Watts. With Hyde Blackman there in on coverage. But Spears, boy, we said at the top of the show, number 22 might be the best player in the country you've never heard of. Eight consecutive games with over 100 yards rushing. Came into the contest today with 15 rushing touchdowns. And his dad, who he says is his biggest supporter and biggest fan and his hero, Family watching in attendance. Here he is. Daddy, you proud of that? Touchdown to Lane. The green wave will not go away. No, they will not. Tajay Spears, man, he's he's been on point all day and I guess that's the point of being yes a spear <laughs> I just love the way this guy plays the game can't wait to tell the story that he talked with us about about his father Margin Spears but here they are going for two and Pratt flanks out Spears gonna take the direct snap and a Wildcat they run the reverse Pratt looking to throw it USC reading that well it's picked up in the end zone. That play was going nowhere fast from the beginning. <laughs> that, that looked like, well, if it was hoops, it'd be 3 p.m. at L.A. Fitness. But oh, man. there's nothing happening there. Oh, man, you're killing them. <laughs> 40 seconds to go in the third, but they're right back in this ball game, just a five-point deficit. Spears has three rushing touchdowns today, ties a career high. Great story about him. He had offers out of coming out of high school of a lot of Power Five conference teams. And Coach Fritz, on the home visit, spoke to Dad and said, Dad, have you ever missed a game? And he knew the answer was no. He said, well, if he comes to school here at Tulane, you won't miss any. He'll be right in your backyard, and he'll do great things. And it's all come to fruition. Exactly. You, if you look at the, you know, the, the call sheet or the, or the book on, on Ty John Spears, it'll say he's from Ponchatoula, Louisiana. Well, that's just New Orleans, people. So he gets <laughs> okay. to stay home, go to Tulane, and when he talked with us about his relationship with his father, he said, that's my dog. <laughs> he's the first one to sign him up to play football. He doesn't remember a moment of football that his dad has missed in his entire career. And it just goes to show you, when you have the support of your parents, and especially as a, as a, as a young man, yes. a young black man in this country, you have the support of your father. The possibilities are endless. He's getting a great education, and he's putting it on, on tape right now. Onside kick. But they didn't catch the Trojans napping. 
Davis was there to scoop it up, and they're going to have pretty good field position as a result. Robert, what do you make of the gamble to go with the onside kick here? I mean, he, he, he's trying to catch him off guard. I'm in the middle of telling a story about <laughs> Tajon Spears, and he keeps an onside kick. I get it. I understand. Right. But I don't really love the, the, the play call there. Just keep the momentum on your side. You kick it off and make them go the whole field of school. Hey, next Monday, number one Georgia taking on number three TCU in the college football playoff national championship game. Presented by AT&T. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. We'll have pregame coverage all day long. But for this matchup, we'll have you covered from every platform. Look at that. TV, radio, digital. So many ways to watch and listen to the biggest college football game of the year. Williams gets it out on the receiver screen. It's caught by Michael Jackson. And Jackson stopped up just shy of the 30, picked up 16 on the play. Caleb Williams has hit 400 yards passing, and we haven't even finished three quarters of play. Oh, my goodness. And he's got four touchdowns to go along with it, which ties the Cotton Bowl record for touchdown passing. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot more points in this game. I'm excited about that. Williams. Great feel in the pocket. He just feels the pressure and escapes. Wisely throws this one away. We're going to have a flag and an offside. I think Williams knew he had a free one. Angelo Anderson, number three right there, moved a little prematurely. Offside. Defense number three. In the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. That's the end of the third quarter. We will extend the third quarter with one on time down. Or not. They're going to extend the third quarter on an untimed down. So, we'll play one more. USC is going to have to clear the field because their entire squad is on the field right now. The nose of the ball is going to be placed right at the 26-yard line with the penalty. Can't go for the pump fake, folks. Hope you didn't get up. Go get something to drink or eat. Got one more untimed play here before the third quarter has officially expired. How many fans at home do you think put up the fours? It's fourth quarter. Yeah. This is our time. <laughs> they had to put them back down. They can do it again here in a second. Williams out of the backfield. Good open field tackling on that catch. Nick Anderson, one of the leaders of the defense, making a little bit of a statement there to end the, the third. The end of the third quarter. Nice hit on Austin Jones. That's the end of the third. Back after this. He's doing right now. Yeah. And Utah beat him twice this year. So I, I just have a, bit, a feeling that. Cam Rice is going to rise to the occasion once again. Utah, just a bad matchup for USC or not? They're just a really good football team. Huh? Two really good football teams that played four times. Both of them won twice. Williams. Down to the 18-yard line caught by Kyle Ford. First down and 10. Like it when a big man like Kyle Ford, 6'3", 220 pounds, isn't afraid to go down and get dirty. Right, go down and get the football, make the catch. That gives your quarterback more confidence that, hey, even if he's a little off, he'll still make a play. And for Caleb Williams, he's now had the fourth 400-yard passing game of his career. Jones in the backfield. He gets the carry. He's brought down after a gain of about five by Dorian Williams. Williams, one of those durable linebackers for the Green Wave. He and Nick Anderson lead the team in tackles with 115 and 108 coming into the game, respectively. They are the backbone of that defense. Yeah, look at Nick Anderson's jersey. I mean, <laughs> that bad boy is dirty. That's how you know you're playing linebacker. Right. You're flying all over the place. Him and Dorian Williams, both over 100 tackles this year. And Williams actually has five sacks, so they might need to get him 
blitzing a little bit more to get Caleb Williams on the ground. Second and six, gets rid of it quick. Complete to Jones out of the backfield. Made a nice move and picked up the first down inside the 10. It'll be first down and goal for the Trojans. And Bobby Haskins, offensive lineman, who started at right tackle today, over from his usual left tackle, goes to the sidelines. That's a position that, remember, at the beginning of the game, they had never started this combination in these positions before. And now they're already having to change him up. But you got to tip your hat to this offensive line. Protection we thought would be an issue, but the Trojans have been on it all day in protecting Caleb Williams. First and goal. Jones cuts it up and is brought down at about the three. Let's go to Quinn. Tulane's biggest nemesis on defense right now, fatigue. USC with a two to one margin in plays, over 70 plays, Tulane's only got 35. Time of possession, same deal. And you just worry about fatigue setting in for the Tulane defense that has just been chasing Caleb Williams around all night. Long plays, eight, nine, 10 second plays. Not sure how much gas is left in the green wave tank. Holding up so far, but you saw Dorian Williams breathing heavily there. Second and goal. McCree in motion, now sets. Williams slings it, touchdown! Kyron Hudson. And the beat goes on for the Trojans. When my main man, Mark Jones, says he's slinging it, watch this viewpoint. Caleb Williams, slinger! Looking like a shortstop playing baseball. Wow. He's got all the arm angles. We said at the beginning of the broadcast, he's got every golf club in his bag when he steps up to the range. Look at that smile on his face. They're, they're throwing touchdowns to Kyron Hudson right now. Everybody's eating. Yeah. Everybody eats, B. A bowl record five touchdown passes for Caleb Williams. We're going to take a short break. On the other side of this, he's got a great story about Caleb Williams on his cultural awareness and panoramic view of the world. Texas, a day that has belonged to Caleb Williams and the Trojans so far. Their lead at 12 right now, a little over 12 minutes to go on the kickoff return. It's Lawrence Keyes the third. And Keyes tripped up and falls down at the 33. Let's check in with the studio. Mark, we had a thriller here. Relia Quest Bowl, Mississippi State, Illinois, tied final minute. Simeon Price, 28 yards to the two-yard line. Yeah, and they're setting up for the field goal, and he takes it all the way down, almost gets into the end zone. And then Massimo Biscardi, 27 yards out. It's good. Four seconds left. Now, Mississippi State up by three. First game without Mike Leach. They're going to beat Illinois to win this bowl game. Four seconds left. Illinois with a little pitchy, pitchy no, move. Just tackle him. Get him down. And it turns out down. to an all-time. Uh -oh. Bad beat here. The line was Mississippi State minus three and a half. Marcus Banks goes to the house. 60 this. yards, and Mississippi State wins this one 19 to 10 to cover. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Shout out to SVP and Sanford Steve. Back to you, Mark RG3 and Q. Yeah, great run a second ago here by Tajay Spears. A 31 yard burst over the right side. And into USC territory. Tell you what, the guile and grit of this Green Wave squad has been unrelenting this afternoon. Hey, we talked to the coaches. They're just making all the effort plays. They're, they're not laying down just because USC has a high control. Yeah. Yeah. Michael oh. Pratt oh. Oh. tucks it under. Yeah. Lost his balance and falls forward to the 35. Picked up three yards. And Spears has been giving that defense some work today. Yes, he is right there. You had the how low can you go type of play. Then he's making cuts inside and bouncing it outside, using that burst. And then when it's time to get physical and get into the end zone, he's done that time and time again. Tajay Spears, oops, he's done it again. 183 yards rushing today for him on 14 carries. It's a very healthy average. Adding to the total ball came out. It's loose. Trojans say they've got it. He put it on the ground. A rare miscue, and it's USC football.
as you see the look of disbelief there on the mm. fans face it's Tajay Spears is having a great really game. Really on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense first down USC. Take another look here. Spears was approaching 200 yards rushing. Yeah, just had that ball knocked out by Makai Blackman. That's why he was all Pac-12 this year. Back with more after this. Fourth quarter. Boy, when USC looks back on this season, win or lose here, there's going to be a little bit of residual in terms of what got away from them. They were so close to being in the college football playoff, Robert. But in the words of Lincoln Wiley, he said, with respect to this game, this may not be the best team that we ultimately have, but it might be the most important team that we have in terms of what we are trying to build now at USC. And what he meant by that is someone had to change the culture. Someone had to be the catalyst. For USC, it's been all these transfers that came in. As he said earlier in the year, this is the most unique roster in USC history. Caleb Williams hands it off. Gain of about three by Jones. You know, Williams is a guy that has a great sense of cultural awareness. He went to Gonzaga High School in the D.C. area. In 1836, slaves built the school that he went to. Those slaves were subsequently sold to people in Louisiana. So on his visit to LSU coming out of high school, he made a very heartfelt and poignant visit to the gravesite of those said slaves brought some of the soil back to the school that the slaves built and gave it to his high school coach and some of the students there as a keepsake and kept some for himself. A young man that's very culturally aware of where he fits in the big picture. Washington with the catch and the run for the first down. You know, Mark, part of the, that story that, that's so impactful is it all stems from his parents. Right. Right. They've been planning this. They had the breakfast club workouts that everybody heard about at the Heisman. And if you didn't, this kid was, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, <laughs> getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning, working out, had a nutritionist, had a personal, personal coach, a mental coach. Everything he's done in his life has been prepared him to be in this moment, and he's maximizing that. On the block, the jargon is Before the snap, excellence. false start, offense, 76. Five-yard penalty, first down. And Caleb Williams certainly has it. And it just goes to show you that we talked about Tajay Spears and how his family supported him and Caleb Williams and how his right. family supports him. It's okay to have a plan. Yeah. It's okay to be, dream big. You know, reach for the stars and... If you don't make it, you land amongst the clouds. All the cliches you can possibly think, but there's no substitute for hard work. And you're seeing his hard work and the hard work of all these players that are playing well on the field today. They're going to keep it on the ground. Gain of a few yards by Austin Jones. Now Lincoln Riley actually told me he remembered the visit, the home visit that he made when he was recruiting Caleb Williams to Oklahoma. And our mom and dad covered every single detail. They asked about every minute variable, what the deviation might be each way. Think about the fact that he went to Oklahoma knowing that Spencer Radford was going to be number one, right? Yeah, that's at the time. True. Yeah. Didn't matter to him. Second and 13. Little receiver screen complete to Washington. Out there spinning like a DJ and making music on that secondary. First down to the 42-yard line, a 17-yard gain by Taj Washington. It just makes it so easy for the quarterback. When you can throw a ball at one or no yards and your receiver goes out there, does a couple spin cycles, and turns it into 17. Taj Washington is out there looking real presidential right now. <laughs> A score here would really put the green wave in a deep hole. Malik Brown in the backfield. 
And you've noticed USC is really milking the clock now. They're not just going pedal to the metal all the time. Changing gears as Brown goes here, trying to get to the edge. And they string it out. He was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Lance Robinson there, the all-conference performer. And you see, you, you talked about the Green Wave. They're not laying down. Right. Four guys run into the football right there, out of bounds. They're, like I said, they're doing all the effort plays. You know, when we talked to Coach Willie Fritz, he said this is a team that's got to do it right all the time. We know that our talent and what we have here is we're going to stress to our players. We're going to make that diving play on the floor like Dennis Rodman would for the Bills. <laughs> right. I mean, for the Bulls. That's what they are doing right now, and I, I love to see that effort from them. They're going to hand it off to Austin Jones, and Jones is going to pick up three, brought down at about the 41. Third down coming up, and about seven to go. Coach Willie Fritz says, we go 1-0 every week. That is the goal. Yeah. Preparation and execution right here, third and seven. They got to try to go 1-0 on this play to get themselves an opportunity to go and get back in this game. Yeah, Michael Pratt anxious to take the field again. But he's been on the sidelines for the majority of the game as Trojans have dominated time of possession. Here we go, third and seven. Blitz coming. Got rid of it quickly. And that's why he's a Heisman Trophy winner. Bynum with the reception at the other end. I feel like every other big moment, <laughs> they're, they're, they're just rolling Caleb Williams out, giving him run pass options. And right here, hits that fourth step, fifth step, boom. Puts it on the money, Terrell Bynum. And they're spreading the ball out to so many different guys. It's really hard to just yeah. key in on one single guy. 448 passing yards today. Mm for Caleb Williams. Yeah, he really is magic, man, isn't he? Yeah. He's Gucci. <laughs> He's Gucci. <laughs> First and ten. Timeout, USC. The first of the half. You got two remaining. 524 to go in the fourth quarter. Half we expect Williams to be wearing a Louis Vuitton robe and Gucci slides in the locker room after the game. And he's been on the ones and twos today. Oh, Robert Griffin the third. Game presented by Prudential, number 11 Penn State against number eight Utah. Team that vanquished this USC squad in the Pac-12 championship game. Hand off to Austin Jones, brought down by Patrick Jenkins and Robert, you pointed it out. It was duly noted that they've slowed it down a little bit. Yeah. Right? USC been very methodical Tulane. here. The first of the half. And Tulane has noticed they call a timeout, timeout here with 5.16 to go. Let's go down to Q. Well, a valued member of the Tulane football family would not miss this game. And that is Devin Walker. He was a safety 10 years ago, back in 2012. Started on as a walk-on worked his way into the starting lineup in September of 2012 he collided with a teammate in a game and injured his C4 vertebrae paralyzed from the neck down came back to school in 2014 graduated with a degree in cell and molecular biology mm. he continues to pursue a master's in neuroscience he's here today in the front row and what a great example about how our lives are not defined as much by the events or the occurrences, but more so by our reactions wow. and his indomitable spirit. He wouldn't miss this game, the biggest in Tulane history since, what, the late 1930s, Devin Walker. Amazing, Q. Simply amazing. Pass complete to Jackson, who made the catch, a real triumph of the human spirit. When you think about that young man's time out, too late. Molecular the biology. The Thirty second time out. There's a guy that can tutor me when I decide to go back to school. Oh, no doubt huh? about it. <laughs> I mean, Molecular biology. I don't even want to know what they're what they're studying over there. <laughs> well, this it's week 17, and we have a big AFC Monday night football matchup for you, Josh Allen and the. 12 and 3 Bills take on Joe Burrow and the 11 and 4 
Bengals, 815 Eastern, 515 Pacific on ESPN, ABC, ESPN2, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN+. Plus. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown on ESPN2 at 7 o'clock. Five fourteen to go, third and nine coming up. And now for today's Capital One rewarding performance. It's Caleb Williams. Surprise, surprise. I mean, the guy's been doing everything. You see the sidearm slings. He's been spreading the ball around on the run, using his athleticism, showing you that that hamstring is just A-OK. -okay. And then he just throws frozen ropes 30, 40, 50 yards down the football field. You can call him whatever you want. Superman, right. Heisman. One thing he does every time he's on the field is create magic. Third and nine. That pass is going to be caught but short. Mario Williams making the catch about four yards shy of the first down. The margin is 12 with about five minutes to go. And, and to think that, you know, when this game began, we were still a little bit unsure as to whether he would play or how much he would play or what he would be moving like no questions yeah he's put all that yeah put that all to bed and I'm more than sure the two lane fans here in two lane defense wish he wasn't playing yeah I tell you what I remember the USC days when James Kahn was walking around the practice facility there in Los Angeles and Snoop Dogg was hanging around the glory days feel like they're coming back for the Trojans that field goal good by Lynch from 43 yards out with four and a half minutes to go. 15 point lead. And you know, we thought, how is USC going to respond to just barely missing the college football playoff? Well, you got your answer. 45, and they're looking to win this Cotton Bowl. We get back. Williams writing a heck of a script and screenplay. Take it back to Hollywood, 36 of 50 passing, 460 yards, and five touchdowns. On the return, Lawrence Keyes finally pushed out of bounds, and it'll be first and 10 for Michael Platt. 4.23 to go. Don't forget the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential coming up next right after this one. Penn State against Utah. So now when you look at Tulane and, you know, what can they do moving forward? Look, Michael Pratt only has 10 pass attempts so far in this game. 10. They've got 293 yards rushing. So whatever way they can get it done, big plays, running the ball or throwing the football, they got to get the ball down the field quickly in a hurry. They're down by two scores. This game's not quite over. And Tulane has the playmakers to make it happen. Got to get to work quickly here. Pratt fires. Complete over the middle. There it is. Deuce Watts. Deuce on the loose. One guy to beat. Finally tripped up. Three yards away from a quick response. Covington swiped at him and tripped him up. You see him right here working in the slot. Takes the catch. Look at him get his legs up. It's like, oh, he can make it. Oh, my goodness. He just comes up a little bit short, but big time play right on cue. 59 yards in all. And there it is, Spears with the touchdown. They came right back in two plays with an answer. A resounding one. My oh my, look at that reaction from the USC fans and the excitement from the Tulane fans. Tajay Spears right up the middle. He fumbled last time he carried it. This time he protects the yeah. football. And he puts Tulane back in this bad boy. We got a game, man. Wow, his, we got a game. His fourth rushing touchdown of the day. Look at that. They only used 23 seconds on the clock and got a touchdown score. The margin is at eight. It's a one-score game with 4.07 to go. Thus, this next series offensively vitally important for the Trojans. Yeah, that's what... Trojan Nation is thinking right now. How big is this next possession for USC? Yeah, I mean, it's 
you could all, you could honestly say this could be the possession that decides the game, but there's four minutes left, and okay. we've seen crazier things happen. The end, the end of this game, the score could be 60 to 61. <laughs> okay. You never know. It's college football for you. But if you're USC, you want to get the momentum quickly right back. It's about how you answer in this situation because you don't want to let Tulane bring Mardi Gras oh, no. to the Plains. You don't want to let them do it. I'm telling you, it'll get crazy out there. spot this at the one yard line first and 10 99 yards away he did signal for the fair catch but couldn't corral it to Quan Jackson so 99 yards away pin deep Mario Williams yeah so we talked about hey Deuce Watts he's in the slot he's gonna run a slant and when it's one on one and Michael Pratt is saying to himself I'm taking the deuce every single time. Deuce Watts, he's got eight touchdowns on the year. They haven't thrown it a bunch today, but that play right there, they need more of those. And this, that drop right there mm. on the kickoff by right. Mario Williams, huge play. Last time USC was backed up like this, it took him three plays to get all the way down to that side <laughs> of the field. Let's see what happens this time. They're gonna run it on first down. Austin Jones got back to the line of scrimmage. Dorian Williams, number two, bowing up on the play. Here's the critical drop a moment ago. Man. Going for the fair catch. Didn't quite look it in. Now they're backed up in their own territory. Second and ten coming up. Just a one-score game. Green Wave with just one timeout remaining. Oh, we're going to have a safety. Jenkins with the tackle. And it's a safety. And they'll get the football on the kick. What a cataclysmic turn in favor of the Green Wave. Tulane will get the football as well. Look at this. Yes, you're going to see Patrick Jenkins right there come across the formation and make the play in the end zone, letting them know, I'm your daddy now. Let's go with the safety right there for the defense. Tulane, the green wave. It's off the hinges. This game is out of control. <laughs> Look at the reaction of Willie Fritz. <laughs> Robert, I got to ask you, was that an RPO? Because it looked like Williams hesitated before he gave it to him. Was he going to pull it out? I just think that USC wasn't trying to get cute there. Okay. Right? You're backed up in your own territory. In the previous drive when they were backed up, they ran the ball, got a little bit of a cushion, and then threw a shot down the field. I think they were really just trying to get the ball out of their own area, and the offensive line allowed Patrick Jenkins to go all the way across and penetrate with authority. Three twenty to go. Green Wave will have possession of the football. And the Trojans with key on the return. Got to the 34. The Trojans will rely on its defense. Let's go down to Q. 
Willie Fritz has been coaching college football for 30 years, but there was a time that he was a player himself for Pittsburgh State. Back in 1981, he was a defensive back with a mohawk you can't beat. <laughs> and guys who wear mohawks like that, they don't quit. And that's what's on display right now. His players see that on his office wall when they come in to visit. Yeah, this game being off the hinges doesn't bother that man at no. all. See that look on his eyes? They scored in two plays the last time they had the football. Spears in the backfield beside Michael Platt. And he's sacked back at the 21-yard line by Tooley. The defensive player of the year in the Pac-12 with one of the biggest defensive plays of the day for the Trojans. You're going to see him there right off the edge. Tooley, Tooley below two. 12 and a half sacks on the year. FBS leader. And when you're behind and he gets to pin his ears back and go forward, that man is dangerous. Earth Team All-American as well, second and 23. Spears between the tackles. Stays on his feet and got back a good chunk of that yardage. Man, is he a talented guy. Got 12 yards on that scamper. It'll be third down and long coming up. They've got one timeout remaining. USC has two. I don't know if they'll do it here, but I wouldn't be afraid to run the football again. If you're going to go for it on fourth down, at least get it managed and put the ball in the hands of your best player. Brown almost got sacked on the run. Oh. Nice straight arm. Put it on the ground, but he was down. He hit the turf. Nick Figueroa in hot pursuit. A five yard gain on the play. It's fourth down coming up. And Mark, this is a big moment. When we talked to his offensive coordinator, Jim Swoboda, he said, Michael Pratt is a competitor. Mm -hmm. He wants the ball in his hands in crucial moments of the game. What more crucial moment is there than fourth and six with a minute left in the game? They need this. They need it. What is Michael Pratt going to do? Need a play here if you're Tulane. Pratt going to take out his duty yourself, kid. And picks up the first down. They stay alive and move the chains. An eight-yard gain for Michael Pratt. Well, I said he wants the ball in his hands in the most crucial points of the game. So what did he do? He took it into his own hands. <laughs> like you said, he took out your do-it-yourself kit, put his shoulder down, let his team know he's going to put him on his back to get that first down. And the green wave called timeout. Timeout. Too late. Their third and final. Their the final timeout of the ball game timeout. with 108 to play. Michael Pratt looked like he was cut or got hit. Hey, don't forget to tune into the Ram Trucks postgame directly following the game. What a thrilling finish and a helpless looking Caleb Williams on the sidelines looking towards the heavens for another opportunity, perhaps. I'm not sure he's going to get one with just 108 to go and his defense on the field. Boy, Robert, this is why college football is so unique and so wonderful, right? Yeah, just, games like this. You just don't know what to expect ever. Expect the unexpected when it comes to college football. And I just love the way this game has gone back and forth. Tulane's been down by 14 at times. USC seems like they've been in complete control. And now all of a sudden, Michael Pratt and Tajay Spears are saying, mm -mm -mm, the green wave, we're not going away. No timeouts remaining for Tulane. Only a touchdown will do. Nowhere to go. He's going to be brought down to the 42 by Figueroa. The academic All-American. And the clock running. They're out of timeouts, Tulane. From the 42, it's second and 14. Pratt gets rid of it quickly, complete. Stops the clock with 38 seconds to go. A four yard pickup to his tight end, Reggie Brown. Right now, USC is playing some man coverage on the back end. 
I know Michael Pratt doesn't have a lot of throws, especially throws down the field today. He's going to have to take a shot on the outside. Yeah. They need big completions here with 38 seconds left on the clock and no timeouts. Nail biting time. scrimmage incomplete under a frenetic and fierce rush by that Trojan front. You're really going Fourth to build an incomplete pass. Fourth down. They brought some smoke. Yes, they did. Michael Pratt's in the pocket. Looks like he's going towards his tight end right across the middle. Oh, not going to lie, guys. The fact that that got knocked down probably saved an interception. Mm. Sometimes a quarterback, it's okay, it's okay to be lucky. Williams summoning the football gods on the sidelines. At Please reset the game clock to 34 seconds. 3-4. We're going to put three more seconds back on the Thank clock. Thank you. If you're USC here, you want to play coverage, but you got to make sure you have somebody watching Michael Pratt. He's been scrambling the entire game. That's where they've been getting a lot of their yardage. Make sure someone is spying him, watching him, if they don't bring pressure so that he cannot scramble to get this first down. Watts is their big play receiver. He and Wyatt. Pratt. Delivers. First down. Bowman. And they're alive. With 25 seconds to go. No timeouts. A 24-yard pickup. Michael Pratt just pulled a Caleb Williams. Used his legs to create. Kept his eyes down the field. And got a completion down the middle. He spikes Beautiful. it to stop the clock, Robert, with 22 seconds to go. This is why you love football, not just college football, football in yeah. general. And Lincoln Riley is irate about something on the sidelines. Second and ten. Keep in mind that Pratt did hit, we talk about this maybe on the other end, his lineman's leg on spiking the ball. On the slant! Cut! Deuce Watts! And a big hit afterwards. Both of them are down. Bryson Shaw and Watts are both shaken up on that 23-yard pickup. Wow. You see, here's An incredible the turn of events. Helmet to helmet oh. contact on the tail end of that play. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Tell the me about plays under further the call review. here. Potential targeting. Potential targeting, Matt Austin. Bryson Shaw, number 27, made the hit. What are your thoughts? Well, for it to be targeting, in this case, it has to be with the crown of the helmet. Uh, he's caught the ball. He's transitioned into a runner, so he's not a defenseless player. Helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact in and of itself is not a foul. But if he lowered his head and got him with the crown, then it would be targeting. And that looks like what you got here. So you think it's targeting, then? I do. He's not defenseless because he started to run, as you pointed out. But I boy, agree. you could feel that hit, Robert. Yeah, I agree with Matt. It's it is targeting. You heard Matt talk about the defenseless player because he caught the ball and turned up field. He's no longer defenseless. It's not like he's in the air in the act of the catch. But the crown of the helmet was hit. And then you see the reaction after the play. That's why we want to take the helmet out of the game. That's why some of these measures, all these rules right here that you see right. have been taken into place because of things like this. Wow, they both slow to get up. Still waiting for the final call. They're still having a look at it, and uh, you see Bryson Shaw on your right. A little wobbly coming off the field. And what a catch and run by Deuce Watts. 73-yard touchdown catch last week in the American Conference title game. He's the fastest of their receiver group. And they are having an extra protracted look at this. 
And it gives Tulane, who's out of timeouts, a chance to get a couple plays called here, right, Robert? Yeah, it, it, there's a couple things going on here, right? Obviously, you're, you're most concerned for both players on the field, making sure that, that they're okay. And then moving forward, now USC's defense has had a chance to rest because of this long review. Tulane's offense and their offensive coordinator, Jim Swoboda, have an opportunity to go through all their best plays that they want to run in this situation. Let's go to Matt. Matt? Well, with them taking this long of a look, I have a feeling that they're going to go, After they're going to take off the target. No the ball carrier was not defenseless. Now, what I think what I think they must have seen there is that they thought it was more of a forehead hit than a crown. They did the narrow the, the area of the crown this year. They want it to be the very, very top of the helmet. So I think that's what they must have been looking at here. All right, the nose of the football at okay. the six yard line. Okay. 18 seconds to go first and goal. Bryson Shaw on the sidelines. Green Wave do not have any timeouts remaining. Got to keep the ball in the air. Incomplete. The bombing. It's probably the best. Thing. Squeeze it. Mark, honestly, that's probably the best thing that could have happened. Okay. He throws that in the flat. Bomb is going to get caught. He's going to catch that ball. He's going to get tackled. Possibly Time inbounds. Time could either run out. They're not going to have a chance to come back and run another play. I don't understand why you throw it short of the end zone in that situation. You got no timeouts. Now there's 12 seconds left on the clock. It's got to be a completion either near or or beyond the end zone here. Spears in the backfield. Lawrence Key split wide to the bottom of your screen. Three receivers to the left of Pratt. Second and goal. Fires! Incomplete for Bowman. Incomplete. The official right there. Eric Gentry there in coverage. And it's third and goal. Looking on the field is an incomplete pass. Third down. Here it is. You're going to see it right here. Pratt throws it across the middle. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Oh, Previous play that's a catch. That's a touchdown, everybody. Oh, wow. That looked like it did not touch the ground. That's a touchdown. You can hear the Tulane fans cheering because they're looking at the replay on the big board above. Here it is again. You're going to see he doesn't catch it clean, but when he goes to the ground, the ball never touches the ground. It's in between his hands, his legs, and the DB's arm. Let's bring in Matt Austin again, our rules analyst. What's your take, Matt? Yeah, Robert, you're exactly right. I don't see the ball touching the ground either. It is resting on both their hands. He secures it before it ever touches. I think this is going to be a touchdown. His leg kept it from hitting the ground, and everything in our replays tells us that that's a touchdown. You know, sometimes it helps to have a pair of McDickens for legs so that ball can't touch the ground. I'm not mad at him. <laughs> And a helpless look etched across the countenance of the Heisman Trophy winner on the other side of the field right now. Alex Bauman appeared to have his leg underneath the football. Willie Fritz's team trying to complete the biggest turnaround in FBS history with a potential win here today. If they do call this a touchdown. This would be back to back games where you feel like USC's defense, not just Phil, but actually their defense has let their team down. Still waiting for the call. Ooh. Thousands of judges here. Here's the After call. further review, the ball did not touch the ground. It's a completed pass. It's a tie game. This is for the lead and a potential win. The green wave, a tidal wave late in the game. 
with a comeback for the ages. Tulane has its first lead of the day. Right now, New Orleans is all about the Pelicans <laughs> and all about the Green, Green Wave. Wave. Oh, man. One of the most storied comebacks in school history. Michael Pratt alchemizing what looked like a dire situation into one of the best comebacks we've seen this year in college football and stunned Trojan fans in his wake. If Tulane can hold on, nine seconds left in this game, they're going to be doing the hot boy Ronald dance in the locker room. Hey. Hey, and it's not. That has nothing to do with Ronald McDonald for any <laughs> no. analysts or play-by-play well, -play guys out there that may have gotten that wrong. No, We're not going to say no. any names. No, not me. But I'm on the block, baby. I'm on the corner. We know. <laughs> we already know what it is. Nine seconds to go. USC gets down quickly. They got seven seconds to operate. They've got two timeouts, but you're looking at something that would be beyond miraculous at this point. That is the Heisman Trophy winner, though. He is the magic man, but it's going to take a whole lot of more magic yeah. from everybody else on the field to pull out a win here. It's going to take some magical and miraculous handiwork, some real prestidigitation to fool the defense right now and get into the end zone. Everybody just opened up their, uh, their dictionary after that word. <laughs> Williams downfield. Incomplete with two seconds to go. Wow. Tended for Mario Williams. The green wave hadn't led until that extra point with just seconds to go. Last year, that guy's team only won two games. One chance for Caleb Williams. They're going to try a bunch of lateral's here. Still on his feet. Still alive. Not advancing the ball a whole lot. And that might be it. It's over. Toyne wins. to the Ram Trucks post game. Where the Green Wave have defeated the Trojans.